Hello and welcome to DCP Live episode 143. That is a lot of episodes, guys. That is actually a lot of episodes. Uh-oh. That can't be right. There we oh, go. We broke it already. No, oh, I had my nice. um I had Twitch on. I just heard myself back, but it's actually muted for the stream. So the stream didn't hear it. Just heard me okay. go, uh oh. So it's <laughs> just heard Tuffy, uh oh. Yeah. And we we're all like, oh no. Yeah, I was I was worried yeah. there for a second. Uh it's fourth of July. It's a fourth of July episode. It sure is. So it's America's birthday. So it is. Happy happy birthday, America. All right. Happy birthday to America. Uh Fran is currently at Guardian Con. Probably getting drunk, smashed. <laughs> I, hope so. I, I totally suggested that. No, don't worry about coming to the podcast unless you start drinking early. Then definitely call him. <laughs> exactly. That is what was said. Yep. Exactly. So, uh, so yeah, he's at Guardian Con, um, and this week we've got Butt Wipe. Welcome, Butt Wipe. How you doing? Yay. Yo, what's up? Doing good, dude. dude nice, it's nice. A good day today. It is fantastic day. Um. Yeah. So. Uh, also, Briar's got a brand new camera, guys. I want to. I want to point this out. Look at. Look how crispy his oh, camera is. If you're watching Twitch the video, Chad already knows. That's, <laughs> that's all Twitch chat is. Look at Briar. Look at Briar. Look how buttery oh, smooth that boat yeah, is. Uh, audio listeners are gonna have to watch the YouTube version. <laughs> yeah. Check no, out you my. Have to. You have to go to my YouTube. new thirteen hundred dollar webcam. <laughs> if, if anything, <laughs> this is just gonna pull traffic to our YouTube channel. So. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah. Thanks, Briar. Thanks for that thirteen hundred dollars investment, Briar, we're gonna man. need you to do this every week. Get a new camera that's crispier than the last one. <laughs> that's gonna get expensive. Fast. <laughs> oh my god! You got this. I believe in you. <laughs> uh, so, butt wife, how how are things, man? What's new in the uh, the world for you, dude? Things are good. You know, I uh, started fresh across the board with all my new channels, and uh, you know, it's been an interesting journey to say the least. But uh, it's been an absolute blast, honestly. So um, just just from my perspective alone, that sounds like a daunting, like giant task. Like for me, if I were yeah. to just refresh all my socials from scratch, like that would be that's a leap right there, Scary. right? Scary, right? That is that is absolutely a leap, honestly. And I was freaked out at first, especially. I'm still freaked out. But uh, <laughs> I was freaked out at first, especially, you know, because you spend four or five years uh, on one set of channels. And then just to start fully new and fresh across the board is like, uh, is anybody going to know who I am still? Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you saw, I posted a, uh, like a comeback video on Twitter when I, mm -hmm. like the week before I went back or I went live yep. the first time yep. and it got like 200,000 views on Twitter or something That's like amazing. that. So oh, wow. Just, like, That's awesome. It was half a million impressions and stuff. And it was just like, holy moly. Like I did not expect all the, you know, support from all the friends and, everybody so it was just like huge and that first stream was thousands of viewers too and it was just That's like, amazing it was incredible i didn't expect any of that but uh it that definitely took a lot of the fear away of starting completely <laughs> fresh you know but uh it's still you know it's daily daily uh up and at them yeah. working hard so um, it's always a grind just, right yeah always yeah. yeah and like it's a fun grind to be to be sure but mm -hmm. like uh it's especially freaky <laughs> just with everything new across the board you know yeah absolutely but it, yeah. it is nice though because i can start off um like for example i've been playing a lot of other games as well not just destiny okay and um when you start back over from the ground up um you can really like spread your wings i guess mm -hmm. if that makes any sense so it seems like uh, a lot of the you know hardcore people who knew me or whatever uh are here no matter what yeah, of so course. it's like yeah. it makes it so much easier to just, you know, play the games I want, do what I want and just have fun. Yeah, it's, it's something I noticed pretty quickly was everyone on Twitter from who knew you from Destiny were all just like sharing everything and like, this is a new Twitter. Go check it out. Make sure you follow, which is really yeah. cool to see. It's it's it was really nice to see that everyone was still very much so behind you. Yeah. And I even I took a like a 30 day just off of all social media break. Mm. Um, nice. and I just, you know, I went outside, I went camping, <laughs> I, you know, rode my motorcycle every day, you know, just hit the gym a lot and just, uh, really lived life for a month and just totally disconnected. That's and, awesome. uh, when I came back, I noticed that people were like shouting me out and I didn't even like, I didn't even talk to them. <laughs> they were just like, they just knew, you know? And so, and so it's cool. Like it was, it was, it was good. I saw a lot of my like real friends that I didn't know that it was like how good of friends they were, you know? Yeah, Absolutely. So. So you went from like 
basically full time streaming for four years and then took a, a whole month off, right? Yes. Yeah. And that was I that was honestly that's, that's like another the leap, best. Right? <laughs> that was another leap too. Like that's scary to begin with, but like that was the best month I've had in a long time. Like you you get so involved in like gaming and like uh yeah. just daily destiny challenges and whatever and like I didn't even play Destiny, you know, during those three days. Like I was fully disconnected. Mm -hmm. And it was so much fun to just uh go out and do stuff. But then when I came back, I felt so much I don't know, I just I missed it, you know. And so yeah. it's like when you do something every day, like stream and stuff, like it can get grindy, but then you take some time off and you know, distance makes the heart grow fond or whatever you want to say. For so sure. it it was so much easier to just like dive right in, you know. So I, I think a lot of people that aren't actually that, that aren't streamers specifically who are streaming all the time they find it hard to believe that burnout is such an easy thing to have happen. But when you're in it, mm -hmm. Burnout comes very fast and you have to take care yes. of the things to make sure you don't get burnt out because uh, it's very hard to pull yourself out of a burnout hole, obviously. Right. Yeah. And even and even if you don't fully get burnt out, there's definitely like stages of burnout, you know, so it's yeah. like some days it's just hard to click go live because you're like, man, I wish I could just like kind of want to just go outside today or kind of just want to like, you know, you maybe you're stuck in a rut or something like there's definitely different steps to it and that like. Looking back now, like with the experience that I've had, um, I can tell I'd be able to see it coming a lot earlier than yeah, of the average person, I guess. And, uh, you know, take steps to avoid it, like yeah. play other games, go outside, do whatever. So, yeah, balance your time. I, I find also like I've been streaming mostly full time for about four years now. And I find that like those outside times, those breaks, those times where you go and do other things that's not streaming is very important because you kind of become a one dimensional person if you're just streaming <laughs> and that's it. You know you what really I mean? Do. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's just your life. And you kind of like run out of life things to talk about if you're not. Right. Yeah. You run like, out of like, life experience, right? I stream and play video games. That's like my hobby. <laughs> That's about you it, want anything you know? else? No. <laughs> That's it now. Like, <laughs> yeah, you need you need those other things to like fill yourself up to then be able to share that as a live streamer because that's part of the live stream aspect of that. So that's yeah, it is. That's impressive, man. I mean, um, if you uh, if you if you don't mind sharing, like, can you talk about the reasons why the change was needed for? Yeah. The, the... So um, for a long time, you know, uh, I streamed with Lucky, and we did a lot of good stuff for a long time it was pretty successful. And, uh, you know, there, there comes a time where like, it's hard enough to do a dual stream, first of all, because of technology and then because of, uh, each other, like it's hard to work one-on-one -on -one with somebody for an extended period of time. And cause course, everything yeah. has to be aligned across the board. Otherwise yeah. it just doesn't work. Yeah. You're messaging uh, we, and all that stuff. Messaging, you know, just talking to each other. Uh, not only that, but even just getting along and like, uh, you spend, you know, 12 hours, a day like when we were in trials heavy we were doing 12 14 hour streams every day and we didn't take a day off for months right so like you spend that much time with one person and if you don't really get along with them you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna have some arguments or some fights or absolutely some whatever. And even if you do did, get along right you still get exactly and yeah. we did really get along we were on the same page for a long time but you know life happens you know he had a kid he had all sorts of stuff going on i have my own stuff going on and so um our lives are just you know in two different directions mm -hmm. and uh um, he moved out to wherever South Dakota or something to join the team. And then I was, I wasn't down with that. Like I didn't really like the team very much. So, um, it took that as a good sign for, what do you think about South Dakota? Time to, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with South Dakota, <laughs> but <laughs> I like Oregon. I'm like, I like where wow. I'm at. Hot take on South Dakota. There's <laughs> <laughs> too much ice and snow. No. You know, I'm with you. Fuck South Dakota. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but, uh, you know, so we just, our lives are going in two different directions and uh, yeah. it just, it just works better. And now is as good a time as any, you know, so just pulled the trigger and went our own separate ways. So, um, yeah, uh, that's amazing, man. And I'm, I'm super happy. I honestly starting over across the board is actually really freeing, um, mm -hmm. because I know everybody mm -hmm. who's there is there for me and me alone. Um, and that's a good feeling, you know? So, yeah, it's yeah. also really yeah, smart to, sure. to branch out in those other games as well early on so you have you have that like that multicolored aspect of your channel so it's not always yeah. again kind of goes back to that <laughs> one dimensional type of thing if you're only doing that one thing all the time then when that one thing goes away then it's hard to recover from that stuff you know 
So. Exactly. And so like, I like, for example, we always play destiny and now I've got destiny emotes. I've got PUBG emotes and I've got all kinds of stuff, you know? And so, um, just, it's awesome. I can play, you know, whatever game I want to, whenever I want to. And that's another thing that's nice about solo streaming that people may not think about is that like, I loved PUBG and lucky hated it. And so we just <laughs> never really got to play it on stream because he just really didn't like it. And that's like one of my favorite games right now. So it's just like, yeah. You know, it's definitely that game is super polarizing. Like it is kind of a lover, <laughs> love it or hate it. It is. Kind of you game. either love it or you hate it, and that's it. Yeah. Like so. Are you still playing that a lot? Because I've heard it's changed a lot. Like I am. Yeah. Um. It's probably my number two game behind Destiny right now. Um. And you know they added tons of stuff like jumping and mantling on things and exploding mm. gas cans and more guns and mm. yada yada. But um, I remember when they added jumping through windows and how it made that like crashing sound. Yeah. And that's all me and my team did for like a month. Yep. That sounds like through a every window we could find. Crash the window. Jason Bourne, everything, dude. <laughs> yeah. Super stealth. Make a montage <laughs> breaking through windows. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, so in terms of destiny, how has the season of opulence been for you? It's been awesome. Um, Destiny, I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like Destiny has just been on such a rise lately. Like people are more hyped Definitely. about it. People have better yeah. views about it. There's a lot of content. There's a lot of good content. Like um, Destiny has been popping. Like mm -hmm. it's been popping. Yeah. A lot of people are coming back. Names I haven't seen in a long time too. And mm. it's just like, it's a really good time to be a part of the Destiny community, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so like, I absolutely love it. The new guns, the new everything. Like, I'm a missile titan now, and it's the best thing that's ever happened. <laughs> ah, so. code of the missile, huh? Yeah. Yes, it's you, so good. I love it. Do you rock synthos snipes for your uh, um <laughs> your slam? Yeah. So that baby <laughs> slam with the synthoseps, I I figured that out a long time ago, and that's probably that's like my crack, honestly. Like, okay, I live. Yeah. For the baby smash. I, as long um, as you're not one eye masking everywhere, then that's great. Yeah, you. It seems like sometimes I have to in comp, but if I'm not in comp, mm -hmm. always, always synthoseps. Nice. Yeah. It's amazing. And then I use I use a high impact hand cannon, the Duke with Rampage ah. and a Rampage spec. And if you slide over ammo, you can two tap. And then after you get a single Rampage kill, you can continue to two tap. So it's like it's just beautiful. Oh wow! It's Didn't know good. that. So yeah, with Code of the Missile, incredible. with Code of the Missile, when you slide over ammo, you get a damage buff. Any ammo, yes. Primary, yeah. special. It reloads your current weapon, and you get a damage buff of 20%. That wow. sounds pretty good. You can actually body shot people with high-impact snipers if they have zero resilience. So that's fun. Wow. Uh, wow. Not a lot of people have zero, but that's just the power of it, you know? So. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. That's yeah, but it works with everything. It works with fusions and everything, and every, every gun, every hand can. Like, if you find a gun that you want to use, use Code of the Missile, and you can get kills with it. That's simple as that. Like you could use a, I don't care what gun you're using. You could use a antiope or I don't even know some weird auto rifle I've never heard of. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you totally. just get twenty percent damage buff for like five seconds because you slid over ammo. It's beautiful. That's wild, man. I'm gonna have to try that. I mean, like, I'm, yeah, me too. I'm a hunter at heart. Yeah, everybody thinks I'm a, a warlock for some god awful reason, but I'm a hunter. Hundred <laughs> percent. You only play warlock. I don't. You look at my my time played is Hunter. It's my most played. All right. I keep hearing about this time played. It's because it's the truth. You keep hearing about it because it's the truth. That's what's going on. So I'm going to have to try that because that's uh, interesting. One thing, though, like the Duke is an interesting gun because you either love it or hate it, in yeah. my opinion. Like I, I'm not a fan of those 110s. I don't like how they feel. Yeah. But I like you. I, you like it, right? If I didn't have Rampage or the sliding over ammo, I wouldn't use it. Like that's mm. as simple as that. The only reason I use it is because of both those things combined. Okay, it's, gotcha. It's like a strategy in itself. Like if I was playing on a hunter, I probably wouldn't use the Duke, to be honest. So gotcha. So it's kind of like it's it's the drug of getting that two tap. Once you get one yes. one of those two taps, you're like, oh, I gotta get another one. Cause yeah, you just live that. for the two taps. <laughs> yeah, that makes like, sense. I've got I've got clips where I cl I kill five or six people, like literally just keep popping them, popping them, popping them. Cause rapid hit, you get you know, faster reload, faster uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And rampage spec is just incredible. So you can, yep. you end up doing like 150 damage to a headshot if you get those rampage stacks. Yeah. Wow. So you can actually headshot body some people if you get like one or two rampage Damn, on the, wow. like, on the like slides. Bow so. shot. It's, it's, like it's a bow stupid crazy. good. <laughs> like it's really good. Nobody, nobody does it though. It's just me. So I'm like, yeah, fine. like I'll tell me about it, but it's hard to do. So 
I uh, feel you on the I feel you on the drug thing because like with the thorn, I've really been enjoying the thorn lately. And when I get the devourer perk, I'm like, oh man, just show me that face. I want to get a two tap. So <laughs> it's like me and swashbuckling. Yeah. Once right? you, once you get some good swashbuckle going, you you've gotta mm. keep swashbuckling. Yeah. <laughs> Getting those one shot body shots with a shotgun from really far away is super fun. Uh huh. Yeah. It can. It's, super, super yeah. Fun. I feel that. And actually, the thorn. <laughs> if you're using the thorn on the missile class. And you slide over ammo with the devour perk active, it's actually just a two tap and they die. Oh I my believe. god. They don't even burn out. I think they just straight this die. This is disgusting. So, wow. Yeah, and then they drop ammo when you kill them, either primary or special, and you just slide over it. Like <laughs> <laughs> you know what I found out recently? With code of um code of the missile. Code of the missile just straight up pops a bubble and then slams into the ground and causes the explosion afterwards. if if you happen to find a bubble in PvP. But it'll yes. it just straight up pops it like a like a regular yep. ass bubble. Like a balloon. Yeah, just <laughs> and then hits it's the just, ground. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's crazy. You don't even have to actually hit people while you're flying. You mm -hmm. do a damage radius of your character. So you can kill them and keep flying by and smash somewhere else. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't yeah, know that. You don't even have to hit that. them. You just have to you just have to fly by them and your shockwave. Kills I've gotta them. play like, this more. Dude, this, this is the missile level. is the best class dude, of the game. Next level missile tech right here. This is awesome. It's, and you can even do the baby slam into the missile and then you go like twice as fast. And so you can just like like you pop it right before you hit the ground. On, you know the bridge on Midtown so in the lawn area? You fly down and then hit the missile mm -hmm. and you're flying yeah, faster. You, you fly down with the baby smash and right before you hit the ground, you pop that super and you just take off. Like, wow. It's like a jet. It's the coolest thing ever. Okay, I definitely have to try this. Yeah, the only nerds actually... running bottom bottom tree striker, they don't know where the fun's really at. They have no clue. They don't know. No clue. You can fly <laughs> around buildings on the outside of the map in some places too. So it's like, it's That's crazy. Amazing. Yeah, how do you feel about bottom tree striker actually? Uh, it's triggering. <laughs> Fact. As a missile titan, I personally am offended by bottom tree people running good. around all the time, just chaining, this chaining good. super energy. This is good to hear. Right. I'm but, glad about this. But uh, you know, it's definitely it's a good class. Like it's right. good. It's definitely it's good. Broken. That's what it is. It's 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 yeah. It's it's nasty. But I just I'm a missile guy, so I don't really. So I have I, don't touch I have it. the perfect solution for um uh for the bottom tree striker. It's called uh, Reversal of Fortune. They get a kill. If they happen to run to the other side of the map and kill the same person, they automatically get kicked to orbit. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah. not a bad idea. Right? Reversal of Fortune. I like it. Reversal yeah. of Fortune. Boom. Like, yeah. Make it proc like as often as, uh, like, uh, what one in the chamber. What is the, what's the sniper perk that puts an extra bullet in when you miss? Oh, yeah. Mulligan? Like, yeah, put it, make it proc about just, as often you as you happen to get a kill. Oh, just that one took oh, oh, nope. oh, there you, go. <laughs> ah, you got it. rabbit, code rabbit. Sorry, man. <laughs> oh, man. Shouldn't have played bottom tree striker. Been, That's just how it is. Yeah, yeah. honestly. <laughs> uh, so this week, Lumina finally came out, guys. And then the Destiny has once again another kinetic. Exotic hand cannon in the in the in the pool of options. Another one. Another one. Yes. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> it's really cool, though. I'm sure every has there, all of you guys have probably used it by now. Yeah. I have. Yeah. yeah. I haven't gotten it yet. Unbelievable, uh, Briar. I, I know. I've been too busy getting day drunk. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's an acceptable excuse. Yeah, I'll we'll accept that. Yeah. Watts, did okay. you get that? Uh, I don't have it yet. I wasn't able to play a whole lot this week, but I w I've been using Rose, and Rose is Rose good. really good. You Rose want? is like my new favorite legendary. Yeah. Rose is super good. Yeah, let's let's start with Rose. So Ro for those that don't know, uh, the quest begins in the EDZ, and you go through it, and you start working through this hand cannon that was Thorn, the original Thorn, and it becomes the Rose, and you start adding mm -hmm. the perks to it. This is a spoiler, by the way. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but these quests aren't really like... You know, they're, they're not like yeah. cutscene quest type of stuff. Like you have, you actually have to read what's going on here to find out that that's yeah. what's happening with it. So you get this legendary hand cannon of the rose, and also once you've completed that uh, that side of it, you can go to your collections and print it out, and it'll have a range um, masterwork option in there. So it's even better. It's got more range than Thorn, actually. Right? Once you. Oh really? I, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, I looked at the stats, and once it's masterwork, it's got more range. I. Because it has the range masterwork, right? Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only thing is, I still feel like Thorn is more sticky, in general, or more accurate. Interesting. But I don't know if it's just because 
the lobbies this past week have been absolute <laughs> crap. Like the I love possibly- the sound of Rose. The Rose, the Rose is just it sounds really beefy mm-hmm. and mean. It's a mean yeah. it does. and Love the sound it. is like half the gun itself, honestly. There's some <laughs> guns I don't even use because of the sound. Like the 10 paces, it just sounds like a, a squirt gun shooting yeah. a wet needle or something. And it's, it's just like, Yeah, oh. sound design makes such a big difference of how guns feel for you. If it sounds like it doesn't hit like a truck, you just feel like you're not doing anything. Yeah. So totally. it sounds super important. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people saying on Twitter that they, they're not grinding the menagerie for the hand cannon anymore because Rose is just better. I mean, it's nice. It's definitely a really good hand cannon. It only has outlaw, I think, but it's like yeah. it feels so good that it doesn't even matter. Like, that's me though. I don't know. So I slide over ammo and I get damage buffs anyway. True, so true, true. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> got to factor this into everything. Yeah, <laughs> literally everything is twenty percent better for me. So, so does that work with a fusion rifle? It does. I have a uh, a backup plan auto loading Wizen rebuke with liquid coils, so it does maximum damage possible. And you slide over ammo, and it does twenty percent more damage. <laughs> so with uh, auto loading and backup plan, you just put it away, you know, shoot somebody, slide over the ammo, and swap out to it, and it just evaporates somebody. Like, Pepsi is questioning his uh, his hunter <laughs> right. loyalty right now. He's about to He's become a like... titan, dude. Uh, that sounds pretty nice. <laughs> You know, it's, I actually I was just using it in Crucible right before I came here, and it's just like it's so gross the mappage you can do. It's, yeah, it's like literally twenty percent farther than you could shoot. Yeah, seconds ago, so it's like it's so good. I haven't used uh, fusion rifles at all until this last week, and I got an Arental. It's got like under pressure backup, high impact reserves, some crap like that. I'm not aware of all the the stuff. It's a good <laughs> yeah. one. It's good under pressure. Yeah, under pressure and um, high impact reserves. So like the bottom two shots are, I think it's they called... do extra damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've I've had some shots that like straight up map people, but <laughs> like it, th- there is a trade off. You got to charge, and you also have to be at the bottom of those magazine to like, yeah, you know what I mean. But definitely. Yeah. So in um, in like three days, I've had like seven hundred, eight hundred kills on that thing. Just Ooh. okay. Yeah. You're using it a lot. Been going in. <laughs> Yikes! Wow. It's um it's going ham. It's been it's used good, huh? quite a bit. There's been a lot of cold fusions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's that air until is so nasty, man. It hits so good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, now I'm thinking about code of the missile and getting 20 percent more damage with that. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's so it's so gross. It really is. If you had that same one with backup plan, I would honestly say. Whatever perk it replaces, it's worth it. Yeah. If you it actually have, it turns it into a shotgun too. So it's tough for me to think mm. about using it that way because um I guess like Tefty mains it, is what he's saying. <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> no, 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 no. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Do that. I it's just usually I'm not like using it as like a reactive somebody's chasing me with a shotgun type of thing. I'm like, yeah, He's laning like a sniper. It's you're, you're straight sniping. <laughs> it is. I kind of am actually. I'm using like a sniper. So fair enough. It can be used that way. So yeah, I feel like yeah, if I get used to backup pl- or um, yeah, the backup plan perk, the plan C perk, then it's it's gonna throw me off a little bit. Probably it's definitely the difference between using it as a shotgun versus using it as a sniper. Like yeah, because I like to use it as a shotgun. Yeah. That's why I have backup plan and auto loading, so that way it's always ready to go. True. True. Um. And uh, just pull it out and evaporate somebody and keep running. Like I hit fire it a lot, actually. So. Yeah. Um, mm. But I mean, if you're if it's working for you, seven eight hundred kills, like, <laughs> it's working. Well, a little too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I still don't have though is the um, snapshot quick draw uh, sniper. So I've been oh, I've been trying to get those so runes, good. jubilation runes, before the the menagerie gets killed. It is running so out good. of time. I'm looking for that too, Tefty. I, I've had no luck getting. I've gotten quick draw and box breathing, but I haven't. I really want quick draw snapshot. Yeah, it's it, people say like the handling on that just feels. Oh, it just one hundred percent different. Just, so using yeah. just snapshot or using just quick draw and then using both, it just feels so good. It's just snappy. It's responsive. It's yeah. It, it feels yeah. it feels like what you would want from a sniper in Destiny. That's what I want. I like to blow it too. too. I've tried so many times. Can't get it. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm over 100 jubilations at this point. So, yeah. Like, I feel like the clock is ticking. And I'm it's probably, ticking. 
Yeah, I'm probably not going to get left. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I really, I'm still hoping that Bungie kind of listens to the feedback about about that and turns back on it and just says, no, we're not. Yeah, or at least some kind of compromise, you know, like spawn four chests at the end there. Like, mm-hmm. or however many, be great. you know, like just one, honestly, is probably going to ruin it for me. Like, yeah. it's maybe if it started out as one, it might not be such a big deal. But like, yeah. we started out farming, you know, six, I don't know how many, six or seven per run. And so yep. for that to just all of a sudden go to zero or to, to one, yeah. it feels like it might as well be zero. You know, it's just like, uh, I, I feel like as Thank much as I've farmed so far in a month is going to take in it the rest of the summer to potentially do that same amount. Oh, easily. Yeah. 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 Like easily. exclusively just doing the menagerie. So, yeah, I like the, I like the menagerie. I mean, it's a fun activity, so it I don't like good. mind yeah. doing it. But if I'm only getting one reward from a 30, 30 to 40 minute run, you know, with with a pub team, you know, that's that's. It's a lot of grinded for it's the difference you know, a sniper between rifle. me sitting in the menagerie and just farming it and just be like, Yeah, let's go, let's keep going. Mm-hmm. And me being yeah. like, oh, I've done two, eh, I'm gonna go do something else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The reward yeah. drip isn't fast enough to want to sit there and see what like you might get you might get it this time. So you're gonna keep on doing it. But now it's like I'm not gonna spend like twenty minutes, you know? And then if you yeah. get if you get six people together who are ready to speed run it. Chances are one of those people are going to drop after two or three runs. And so your speed run yeah, team probably, is breaking. Yeah. 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 So it's tough. It's, it's, a, it's a hard spot for them to be in, but we'll see. I mean, there's, they'll probably, they have to. I have faith in them now that maybe they'll look at it. You think? Maybe they'll see, you know, the drop in players after the one drop reward and maybe they'll fix it. Like there's, there's nothing saying that they couldn't, you know? So yeah. Right. I, I mean, we'll see. Yeah. It's not given power rewards after you, your first one or two or Do three. You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so like I don't I don't see it like it doesn't matter for power. It's just like trying to get those rolls is fun. Yeah. Well it's it's slower than if you were trying to run a nightfall to get a whatever gun to drop. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. Much slower. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. like, what's the point? Like I get that you get to like kind of pick it, but you can pick which nightfall you want to run. So <laughs> it's like kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just RNG, right? There's some people who have done it and they've got everything that they could ever want in the first week. And then there's people who have done hundreds of runs for the same weapon and they had don't have what they want. Yeah. 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 I don't. So it's still I, RNG, even though you get to pick what you want. There's still a lot of RNG involved. Exactly. Yeah, there is. And there's a lot of stuff. I haven't gotten a single God roll. Yeah. Not out of like Ostring or anything like that. No, no Ostringer, no sniper, no anything. Like I've, I've legit, I'm like borderline giving up already. I'm just like, man, I've tried so many times, not a single god roll of anything. Oh, that's yeah, rough. I'm the same. I haven't gotten a god roll on anything, and yeah, you know, I haven't run as much Stefty, but I've run it a bunch of times, and yeah, but I do enjoy running it. So I think it's the best content that's come out of the season pass so far. To be honest with you, it's really good. It's the most rewarding. It's definitely super good. This it is, is, yeah. It's the first time in Destiny's history to have this much reward happen. Yeah, you know, like. And also oh, be able yeah. to choose it and all that. Like that's, it's a, it, it's dangerous because it gives us a taste of what destiny could feel like <laughs> with this much rewards. And then it's like, ah, I want that. Don't take it away. Come on. Yeah. Well, that's, that's exactly the problem is that we've had it now. So to take it away feels bad. Whereas, yep. you know, like you said, if it started out with it being like this, then we'd be like, all right, this is fun activity. I get to choose what I want. Cool. But you know, even if they nerfed it in the first week, we'd probably be like, all right, we had our fun. OK, but now it's just been so long that this is what the menagerie is to us that it's kind of rough to take that away. Yeah, it's just too bad. But yeah. uh, I mean, if they do have a change of heart, that'd be amazing. I don't think they will, since Bungie is usually once they've said they're going to do something, they're usually like, well, that's it. We're <laughs> going to die on this, you know, until yeah. yeah, until another seasonal change or something. But. Uh, we true. didn't we didn't finish talking about Lumina because we we talked about Rose a little bit. Right. That's true. We got distracted. <laughs> Classic <laughs> podcast style, getting distracted. <laughs> uh, Lumina is really cool. It's a Lumina is amazing. Cool. It's a change. it's very cool to see a support like weapon put into Destiny. Yeah. It's the first support weapon, well, weapon with support capabilities that we've seen in Destiny. Yeah, exactly. Really cool. So for those that don't know, um, it's like Thorn, but in a reversal light type of way where you get a kill from shooting Lumina. You get a kill um, on like a regular enemy or a, a guardian. They drop a light orb. If you pick up that light orb, you get a noble round. 
Now, this this is where it changes things a little bit, where um, in order to shoot the noble round, you have to hip fire it. And I like hip firing a lot, so it kind of changes the play style for me a little bit. And I'm like, uh, kind of wish you could choose when to fire it. But you hip fire and then it shoots a, a, an orb that auto tracks to a teammate that's near you. And it seems it's got good tracking too. it does if mm. they're next to you. It seems like there's like a radius where if they're in that radius next to you, then it will like it'll straight up do a 180. If it, you try to like fire it down the hallway at somebody who's across the map, it seems like it loses the tracking on there. Uh, but if they get that, they get is it blessing in the sky? Is that what it's called? Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Yeah, blessing in the sky, which heals them, gives them a buff for ten seconds, and gives the the person and yourself a twenty percent buff of damage in the crucible, or a thirty five percent buff in PVE. Right? Thirty five? I think it's thirty five. Right? Yeah, Holy I, be- I believe it is. Realize. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's significant. It does not stack with other buffs, though. So if you're standing in a well, a, a warlock urine well, you will not <laughs> get the double stack on that. It'll just, it'll, I think it switches to the well of radiance. Um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Pretty nuts, right? I wonder if that's a bug then. Yeah. So today, the fun thing that I found out about the Lumina is that the sliding over ammo perk on mm. Titan, um, it increases everything by 20% in PvP. And um, it actually does stack with the Lumina it buff. Stacks? Oh, really? It does. Yeah. And I, everybody told me that it didn't stack with other buffs. And so I was like, oh, whatever. I was just playing. And I noticed that my sniper was body shotting people, anybody. And so I tested out in a PvP private match. And so a 10 resilience guardian with the sliding high impact sniper and the Lumina buff combined um, does 227 damage to the body. Whoa. 227. It'll one shot any super <laughs> in the head what? and it'll one shot any guardian to the body. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah. Wow. And you the, are uh, just, you're really selling the code of this <laughs> pretty hard. I gotta tell you. So hard right <laughs> even, now, the, man. <laughs> even the beloved can actually body shot low enough resilience with those two combined. Wow. The beloved can body shot kill. Wow. wow. So, I don't know. Maybe it's not supposed to work with that. Maybe they missed that, but yeah, maybe, it maybe. definitely works with, slip through the track. with the Correct. missile. It definitely works. It stacks. So, well, maybe I wonder wow. how much they tested if it's like just warlock buffs. They're not getting the stacking with it. I know it doesn't affect your supers. So maybe it's because the well is a super. Um, yeah. But the only thing I've tested with is the missile and it works very well, like very, very well. So. Yeah. Interesting. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 So in PVE, I mean, eh, Technically, so the the trade off is you're not using mountaintop. Assuming you have mountaintop and you like obviously you're going for DPS, you have to one person has to swap that out and to then shoot noble rounds to give that buff. But 35 percent is huge for something that's not like not taking up a um, a boop cannon. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because isn't that the same? If it's not void damage, is 35 percent? I believe so. Yeah, 33. Yeah. So it's a really. I think it might be thirty three, but still, yeah. it's, it's if anything, it's better. Yeah, so. exactly. So that's that's a very interesting. Yeah, really It doesn't buff. look like it stacks with anything else. So <laughs> the fact that it stacks with that is very interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's hmm. crazy. I yeah, I don't know why. I I assumed it wouldn't work, and then I just found out on accident. So, huh? I wonder if we're gonna get wow. notes in a couple weeks. Found a bug. <laughs> Probably. I hope not. I hope I don't just like <laughs> expose them and they take away. <laughs> But wipe exposes the hack in the crucible body shot people. Bungie, Unbelievable. <laughs> Code of the missile. Yeah, so it's really cool. It's uh, it just changes the play style for the first time. You can kind of be somebody who's a healer in the crucible or in PVE and giving buffs and all that. It's it's cool. I, I yeah. It's like it's a step towards this action RPG mm-hmm. type of thing that Bungie's talking about, mm-hmm. right? Totally. Definitely. That's actually really cool that you can heal people. One of my friends that had it when we were just doing hand cannon kills was he was just running around like healing me mid gunfights and stuff. I'm just like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like it is really just cool. extra damage, healing, you know, whatever. Sure, I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. Like it's awesome. Yeah. With a team that's communicating too, I could see it being really useful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Especially because it's just a good gun to begin with. So it's like, right. cool. Yeah. Why not? It's a 150 kinetic, feels great. Like, it's it's a good weapon. You can't yeah. ask for much more. Yeah. So so yeah. Now we have four kinetic uh, exotic hand cannons, right? And all of them are really good. Last word: Thorn, yeah. Ace of Spades, 
and Lumina, and they they have yeah. have these unique perks to them, which is really great. Yep. So maybe you could get you get the Lumina buff with Ace of Spades. It already two taps with Memento, right? Um, it doesn't quite two tap with Memento anymore. It used to do it with it I guess maybe if you had like zero resilience, but I know that they nerfed one eyed mask so it wouldn't two tap with Memento. But I believe you could be rocking the code of the missile slide. <laughs> <laughs> well, Memento Mori and sliding in general two taps already. So oh, I did not. Um, nice. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a twenty percent. So I would actually say that since it's also twenty percent on the Lumina, then that would definitely allow Memento and Lumina to two tap. Yeah. So there's some that discrepancy that we missed three hand cannons. I think we were talking about good hand cannons. <laughs> yeah. We were definitely talking about good hand Crimson cannons. Crimson is right. different. And also, you said kinetic. And I said Sun kinetic. Is not yeah. Kinetic. I said I specifically yeah. said kinetic, and I feel mm -hmm. like Crimson is kind of <laughs> outside. That's one thing, guys, that you're that you messed up on. Yeah, a kinetic. Crimson is a different thing that feels not like a hand cannon, in my opinion. It feels more like yeah. a pulse. Um, I guess, well, there's Sturm, though. There's Sturm and Malfeasance, but... There's Sturm. Oh, yeah. Those Which aren't really good. 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 Yeah. It's good now, right? Better? It's better. It's okay. I mean... Yeah. You gonna use Malfeasance over Lumina? <laughs> no. <laughs> or yeah. many things. Yeah. Sturm, <laughs> last word, Sturm, you know? like. Yeah, there's a reason I said four, guys. These are the four that you're actually going to use. <laughs> the four that matter. <laughs> I wasn't intentionally forgetting about other things in the sandbox. I'm saying these are the options, the ones that you're actually going to put on the plate and be like, well, clearly I'm going to pick one of these. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you pick Sturm. You also pick using a sidearm as your energy weapon. So Yeah, exactly. You're, That's yikes. You're committed right there. Yeah. Yeah. If You're, you're committing a loadout right there. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really cool. Exciting to see it. Do you guys believe in the rumors about a bad juju coming back? I, I wasn't it. it data mined or whatever? Yeah, but or something was found, and that's why people believe it. Like a catalyst or something was found for it. I think it was a catalyst. Yeah. See, I don't always. Yeah, I mean, every gun from Destiny One is coming back in Destiny Two, right? Every except the Galhorn. Except An the Galhorn. Probably. I would be shocked if the Galhorn doesn't come to Destiny 2. Same. I don't think it will, really? honestly. You don't think so? I feel like, yeah, I feel like they're going to save it for either D3 or just for, you know, it'll never be as good as original Galhorn, so don't ruin it. Like, I feel like that's mm. what they're... I feel like they would take that route over just bringing it back just because, hmm. you know? I don't know, Even though. if it's name alone, I, I, I can't see them not bringing that gun back. We'll see. Maybe they'll bring it back as a pulse hand cannon. <laughs> Perfect. I hope it's kinetic. <laughs> Maybe they'll bring it back as a, as a single grenade launcher, an energy one. <laughs> Sounds great. That'd be a mess. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I don't. I like. I I would like to see it. Uh, bad juju, but like I don't know if it's. Bad juju is a cool gun. Yeah. But there was also some. Good. There was also some tinfoil hat stuff going on with the reason that super exotics were nerfed is because we're going to get bad juju and if you had that with bad juju people would have supers all the time that makes sense so so that's yeah. why they killed skull of omkara yes that's exactly why they killed it so hard too they're like <laughs> this exotic is now worthless <laughs> that was like my favorite thing to do in pve it was just slova bombs for days but not anymore yeah like I, I get that argument, but at the same time, there's a lot of exotics that like just straight up underperform in that department. Oh yeah. So yeah. even if you had like bad juju, it's like you just wouldn't use that exotic with bad juju. You'd use like no. You'd use Luna boots or you'd use um, transversive steps or something. Yeah. 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 Um, well, season opulence has been great. I've definitely been enjoying it. What do we have looking forward to it's next week? Super good. Next week is gonna. Whoa, you're not gonna stop playing Destiny for a while, guys. <laughs> right up to September, then more Destiny stuff's gonna come out. Nice. Uh, so it's gonna be the Triumph Hall and the Age of Triumph. So this is where you kind of, because it's not the same thing as Solstice of Heroes. Solstice of Heroes is after, but this is the Triumph Hall stuff and Triumph Hero. Do we Triumph. know anything about Triumph Hall? Do we? I don't think we do. Do we? I don't think we or, do. Or, right? Or I haven't heard talking anything. about it. I haven't heard anything. Tribute this Hall. This is new activity. Did I call it Triumph Hall? Tribute Hall. The Triumph of Tribute Hall of the Age of Triumph. Triumph of Tribute. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. That's what's going on. 
yeah, honestly I don't, don't even know. know. I've, I haven't even heard of it until you mentioned it right now. So well, Apparently the only thing loop. we know is that so a lot of people got the Saladin tribute coin and they got the Zavala tribute coin which you collect that triumph and currently it just disappears from your inventory. Yo, I'm really nervous that like it's going to bug bug out since you already got it early. Right. That's I'm what I was afraid too. of. So I didn't, I didn't turn it in. I so turned I'm just mine in because I was just, just like clicking them really fast because of, you know, yep. triumphs. And then I was like, yeah. Oh no. Right. What if that bugs my account? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I did the exact same thing, dude. I'm so worried that we're going to get screwed over, but say oh, I'm concerned about it gonna have some sort of like exotic tied to it it's gonna be a bad juju <laughs> it's right? bad. that's literally bad juju <laughs> when stuff like that breaks they're usually pretty quick on fixing it that's true unless it's and i guess yeah. we've known about it for a while so i'm hoping that they'll be like oh people have been turning it in and it's been disappearing let's get this fixed for when it comes out that's true yeah as long as it's an easy fix and as long as it's not something deep-seated in the yeah in the code. yeah tied good luck directly to the heavy ammo drops it could be <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, who knows maybe they'll just give it to us anyway just like we screwed up here you go here's bad juju yeah exactly <laughs> could happen uh so bow wife how do you feel about a bunch of new players coming in that's going to be free to play in september i love it i i've seen a lot of people have mixed feelings about it mm -hmm. but honestly like maybe i'm i don't know if i'm an exception or i don't know what the majority is but like the more people that play Destiny, the better it is for everybody. Mm -hmm. The better, 100%. you know, yep. more populated playlists of all of across the board, like even strike playlists. Like, yes, I'll take more people in there. Sure. Like, um, you know, it yeah. means you match up against the same people less often. It means you team up with the same people less often. You get games faster. Yeah. Like, uh, and the more of a demand a game has, you know, the more stuff that they seem to be able to do. Like, imagine if, if destiny had Fortnite numbers of people you know like mm -hmm. they'd definitely have a lot more uh resources to do stuff faster or do more stuff or do whatever you know so it's yeah. like it's almost always it, it is always a good thing to have more people join like i 100%. i don't see that any other way personally yeah i agree plus there's more noobs to shoot at so 100 percent, man <laughs> that's always good it's like christmas in the summer Literally, yeah. Like I used to <laughs> Christmas Call noobs, of Duty summer noobs. Yeah, Call of Duty Christmas noobs, dude. I used to yeah. hunt those guys down. In oh, that was the, the best. It was the best time of year. Oh, like two weeks of just absolute <laughs> nukes after nukes, you know? It was great. You can always tell when somebody's trying to like kill you with the SMG from across the map. You're like, oh, and you're like, oh, oh you're new. there they are. Oh, welcome. <laughs> yep. Exactly, dude. Exactly. Where they're using all blue gear. Like, yeah, mm, perfect. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Um, how you feeling about the moon being haunted? Uh, Apparently, scared. it's actually haunted, right? It's actually like, haunted, haunted, right? haunted. Yeah, NASA's gonna go up there and kick the hive out. I hope. <laughs> Here's hoping. <laughs> right? We're bringing back down to earth. Yeah. I think I think this new theme is gonna be awesome. I really like the like scary vibe they're trying to put out. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. I'd be totally down for a straight up, like, horror story campaign, you know, <laughs> like, straight Same. up. Like, that would be awesome. Put me in the darkness, make bloody thrall running after me. Oh, like, my God. <laughs> sure, dude. That I would be cool. Wait. I would love that. Like, that's, that's so great. cool. That's a side of Destiny that I'd love to see. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely excited about it. it. Yeah, it is possible now that Bungie's kind of freed from Activision that they could start exploring more mature topics, too. It should be interesting. Just bump up the age. The age. <laughs> I don't know if they necessarily need to bump up the like the. They don't need to go too ESRB. far. They don't need to have Eris cursing at everybody. Right, Just right, but they could definitely like <laughs> amp up the, you know the, you know the maturity level of storytelling. You know, you know we are getting those finishers. Maybe uh, rip a limb or two off sure. from the elixir. That's like what that. I'm talking about. <laughs> Just go full on no, Mortal limb. Kombat. <laughs> you rip a limb off, reaching into people's Uppercut bodies, and tearing out stuff. <laughs> Oh, fatalities, dude. <laughs> yes, that's what we need. Just rip that <laughs> ogre eye completely off. You know, <laughs> pull out the orbital sockets get destroyed. And <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that, that's some um, that's some stuff I'd buy at Eververse. I'd be like, Tess, yes. right? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. will purchase that. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> the gore great. pack. <laughs> exactly. The gore pack. <laughs> Upgrade my game to the gore pack. Yeah. Like just straight over. changes it to M for mature if you buy that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's a blood code for Destiny 2 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I like the sounds of that. So coming in September, they're going to do like the armor perk change, armor 2.0 stuff and all that. Do you think that the stuff that we're getting in Menagerie right now is going to be just dated, not worth it once new armor set comes out? I mean, we'll see. Like, you know, I don't know. I didn't. So I, I've been busy. I haven't actually looked too much into the new armor stuff or, other than just like the, you know, what I've heard from people, I guess. Um, and the biggest thing I heard was that you can put the Eververse stuff on like anything. And so that's a trans that's cool. thing. Yeah. They're, they're essentially adding it. So all of the Eververse armor that you've had drop for you will be a, uh, an ornament that you can apply to any piece of legendary gear for that's a, a year, year three, I guess year three legendary. Gear. Yeah. That. So that's great for yeah, the visual which, side, right? That's super cool. I don't know. I mean, honestly, you know, if, if menagerie gear does become irrelevant, like, I mean, that's just part of moving on to the next DLC, in my opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't have any problem with it, really. It sucks to grind gear, get a god roll gear, and then have to immediately lose it. But, I mean, that's what they did with last year with Solstice of Heroes, right? Yeah, exactly. They got all that cool, colorful yeah. gear, and, like, two weeks later, it was useless. Yep. So, yeah. um, you know, that one was, that was interesting. That was kind of close, but like this Menager stuff, it will be good for months. So how long does That's it need to be good for? Will you be able to transmog that, that hero's gear actually? Oh. That's a good question. That would be really cool. That would be cool if that's an option for sure. Because we're going to be, if it's anything like the last time we did Solstice of Heroes, it's going to be a huge grind. Arm is going to look super cool. It's going to have really cool ornaments. And then we won't be able to use it. So <laughs> I hope so. That would be amazing. Get that would actually out. be awesome. That would be really good. Yeah, I personally don't mind if all the stuff that we got out of the menagerie ends up becoming useless. Because like that's part of the fun of it is that you grind stuff, yeah. you get it, you use it for a bit, and then you go on to the next part for whatever the DLC is. If it's yeah, all the yeah. same stuff, it's not that much fun to get the new stuff. Exactly. 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 Yeah, yeah I mean, that's kind of what the, the issues with the seasons have been, is that like, it's all there's just a few changes that happen and you're pretty much getting the same stuff over and over. And that creates like fatigue in the loot pool. So, yeah. 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 I mean, I'm down. I'm sure this horror set of hive armor might look pretty freaking cool anyway. Mm -hmm. So definitely like maybe I'll just want to use the new stuff more anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. So <clears throat> we're coming up now at the end of the annual pass for Forsaken. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, how. How would you sum up the year of Forsaken? If you could give like a like your thoughts and feels overall, how they performed with it. I think that, you know, it's probably in all in complete honesty, it's probably some of the best time of Destiny ever, really. Mm -hmm. Like because yeah. back in the day, even year one, Destiny One, like I played a lot of that, but and it was very good. There was a lot of broken stuff, you know, there was a lot of <laughs> bugs, there was a lot of whatever, but like, it's honestly some of the most, some of the best, if not the best time to be a Destiny player. Yeah. Cause like, there's just so much, so much, you know, and then like, not to mention they brought the missile class. So they sold me on that already. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> Dude, you've been selling but, me like, missile, man. Oh. <laughs> My goodness. But, no, like it's. It's. I think they did a really good job. Honestly, I really. I'm glad with. I'm happy with the way that it's turned out. I guess I, minus the lack of trials. If yeah. there was trials, it would yeah. be literally the best. If it was even if it was just old trials, just ported over, like, yeah, it would be probably the best. I, I. I feel like I agree with most of that. And then there's the PvP side, and I feel like PvP has definitely been lackluster for a lot of it. Aside from like, well, I mean, it's a little weird getting all the best PVE weapons from PvP. So that's yes. that's weird, but also just like comp is strange in this game. It's just weird. Comp's kind of been rough, mm -hmm. <laughs> to be honest. Like it's I don't know. I know I know what they were trying to do with it. I think yeah. they kind of missed the mark a little bit. Um, but I mean, it's fun. It's if you want a more intense experience than quick play, like it's definitely there. But yeah. between you know matching the same teams twenty times in a row that just beat you every time, and uh, the nightmare of losing rank when you're trying to solo queue is just like, I don't know. It's weird. It's definitely interesting, but a annual pass for me has been super uneven, right? It's mm -hmm. like some parts I've absolutely adored and some parts have I, just no interest. This whole season of the drifter, I played less destiny than I've played like since the beginning of destiny, right? It's just, it, 
just wasn't interesting to me. I'm loving the menagerie, though. I love the last raid. Uh, you know, the Black Armory was a little a bit of a miss for me, but that did come with a raid, which was great. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really been kind of up and down, but like the way the season pass is ending, it's going out on such a high note that it's, you know, it, it's got me interested to see what's going to be in the next season pass. Mm -hmm. And they change it yeah. up to where like you, you have to buy it specifically. Like you can just straight up choose to not buy right. those seasons that look lackluster. Yeah. So like, Season yeah, of the Drifter would have been one of those for a lot of people. They would have been like, ah. I probably wouldn't have bought that one to be honest. Yeah, I, I just don't like Gambit very much. So yeah, and Reckoning was and very unrewarding. That's a huge change because I, I think for a lot of people, it's you know, although I don't think the amount we paid for the content we got was bad. I thought it was actually yeah. a pretty fair price. Mm -hmm. But if you oh, yeah. look at the very beginning of a season pass, it's hard to give that money up when you have no idea what you're getting literally yeah. no idea at all so this is going to yeah. be so much better that you can just kind of pick what you want what piques your interest so i'm i'm so happy with what they're doing and i'm sure they're going to learn from all the stuff that they did right with mm -hmm. with this season pass yeah i'm i'm really excited to see how they evolve with this stuff because they they said that like it, it, there was a pc gamer article that came out actually recently and they yeah i saw that article that was a good article yeah they divulged further into this and they said that this year essentially outlined like the the strides that they want to take and the next year is going to be going deeper on those strides which as long as they learn as to why season of the drifter was yes lackluster for most people yeah like unless you loved gambit it was pretty much a season that you wanted to skip if they learn those things and keep things updated and refreshed so it's not just only this and only that uh, then i think they're going to be really successful with the season model yeah, I agree. And all these like free to play players are going to come in. They're going to be like, "What? Yeah. You just kill me? What? Yeah. What is that gun? All right, here's yeah. my credit yeah. card. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to. I'll this. buy that <laughs> one season pass. Give it to me. Ten bucks. <laughs> to That's get a the quest. Game. All right, I'll do that. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. You know that that article that you you mentioned in PC Gamer had some really interesting stuff coming from Mark Noseworthy. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the quotes in it, I just looked it up again because I wanted to find the quote specifically. Uh, he said, we want to pick a corner and stand on it. Let's not worry about Joe Walmart like someone who buys GTA and one other game. Joe Walmart. We don't want to be that one other game. That person doesn't want to play Destiny. They're not going to marry Destiny that w the way we want players to marry it, you know? So that, that end of the quote. This is such a huge yeah. turnaround in language about Destiny. I mean, if you can look a few years back where Luke Smith was talking to Giant Bomb saying, you know... We're, when you're done with Destiny, just put it down, play yeah. something else, and come back and pick back up, you know? Yep. Like, this is a huge turnaround, even from the release of Destiny 2, where they talked about hobbyists and, you know, like, all that kind of stuff. They really were marketing that game toward Joe Walmart, right, in quotes. They were. Yeah. Like, huge 180. One of my complaints about Destiny forever has been, you know, like, Every season or every three months, it feels like they're changing the target audience for this game. You know, it yeah. used to be like real hardcore PvP players loved it because Trials of Osiris. Now, like, obviously that's not their target audience, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I love this language in this quote. It's, yeah, it's great. Yeah, the, the whole perspective of where they're taking this with a Bungie-owned and controlled IP is just... Amazing. And if you're a fan of the franchise, this is absolutely one of the best times to be around and be a fan of the franchise because it's looking incredible. Oh, yeah. And with cross save coming, I mean, cross save, like, obviously, I'm going to play P on PC most of the time. But the idea that I can take that save, play it on like PlayStation downstairs, Stadia or Stadia because I'm traveling or something like that. Like, <laughs> no, honestly, that's a really cool proposition right there to be like, oh, it is. I'm gonna, like transfer my save like. So cool. There's so many people that have been coming to chat saying, I can't wait to be able to play on PC come September. Yeah. And yeah. not have to regrind all the stuff that they have or emblems and all that. Like, yeah. yeah you know, think absolutely. about it if you like travel a lot, you know, like you mm -hmm. can, oh, yeah. You know, you can travel and play on Stadia or bring your, you know, PlayStation or Xbox with you. You know, you don't have to bring like your gaming rig, but when you're at home, you can play on your gaming rig. Hell, when it's on Steam, you can even play it on your iPad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. That's pretty cool. Because, like, you know, the, let's say Zer is interesting in the future. Right now, Zer is boring. Let's, let's, say, let's just let's say, say 
Let's imagine. There's a big leap here, Steffi. I don't know if I leap. can. <laughs> Let's say Zer's cousin. I can take this jump with you. <laughs> a cousin of the nine shows up and takes over Zer's job, revamps the store. Suddenly, it's really interesting. You're traveling. You got Stadia. You need to log in to be able to get that stuff. You could do it on your account. You don't have to take a console with you to yeah. be able to get, get that yeah, stuff done. Like, and Stadia is going to work in like a web browser on a laptop. You know, yeah. all you need is a mm-hmm. decent inter- internet connection, and Stadia works, right? Yeah. So you don't have to. You don't even have to bring. You know, a, a a PS4 or anything. You just have a laptop or access to a laptop. It yeah. doesn't need to be a gaming PC to get 60 FPS Destiny 2. Yeah. You could play it on, like, those share computers in hotel lobbies. Right? You probably <laughs> could. <laughs> Why not? That'd be so hilarious. <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, like, the, the, when it, when they first announced Stadia and they first announced the, the deal with Destiny, I was kind of like, ah. I don't know. This is super gimmicky. And then the more I yeah. thought about it, the more like utility that I saw with the cross save mm-hmm. ability, the more I'm like, damn, I think I might become a founding member of that. Just so I get my name and like get have the, the option. You gotta get the name. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Seems cool. Yeah. I already reserved yep. Tefty Tef, so you're going to have son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How much money do you want? <laughs> yeah, <but. laughs> I got a camera. How to much pay do for I got to pay, pal? You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, really, yeah, I can't wait i can't wait for cross save dude because i have so many friends that i unintentionally abandoned mm-hmm. on ps4 yeah. because my pc account was just you know i play 1440 140 frames right or 144 yeah. frames so Good i'm like God, you're an elitist I'm, man unbelievable it's beautiful <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful so it's just hard for me to go back and play ps4 to grind on it so much you know yes and so it's yeah. like there's a point where you're like, maybe you ask a friend to help you level up a little bit or whatever. And it's just like that whole mess is just gone. If mm-hmm. I want to play PS4 for a day, just play yeah. PS4 for a day. Like I've got all the yeah. stuff, you know? So it's just like, it's, I can't wait because I have a lot of, I still have more friends on PlayStation than I do on PC that want to play with me all the time, you know? Yeah, for and sure. So it's yeah. just like, it's, it's awesome. I, I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's so for me, I've, I've kept up with PC and PS4 and what dictates my time is always what's coming out. I need to be on my main account to do the new stuff, right? Because I'm not going to yeah. just grind super, super, super hard for something that I'm going to just end up getting rid of. And now it's just going to be a case of I can have set days for PlayStation, set days for PC. You know, I can really just go wherever I want to go and not be like, oh, well, I got to prep for the raid. So I have to yeah. be on this system, Yeah, which is going to be so good. Yeah, it's, right. it's going to be a game changer. It's going to be the time. Yeah, Mark knows where he also had mentioned that, you know, cross play is on the agenda too, you know. Right. Yeah. That would be really yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. And I, that's outstanding. Well, what was amazing is that they said uh, it, it was in reference to PC and Stadia having cross play. And it was the that they were going for cross play in general, right. not just on that platform, but it's going to be yeah. down the road once they've worked more things out. Once Sony right. has it's finally not, come to it's terms, it's not coming with Shadow Keep. No, but not not with Shadow Keep. That would be it's, ideal. That would be straight up ideal. That'd be so cool. But it's on their radar, you know. Yeah. Once Sony finally goes, all right, you can have it. We'll have crossplay. These people, yeah. they're they're filthy people, going to be infiltrating our network, but we'll, we'll be okay with them. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of their things. They the were day. like, oh, you know, it's for safety that we don't have like cross play type of stuff. Oh, right. like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Sony. Trying yeah. to protect our players from those protect my Nintendo wallet. people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, all right, Sony. Yeah, the future's, future's looking really bright, guys. It's looking really, really bright. Super good. I'm really excited. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait. It, it's funny. There was a time not that long ago looking at like Destiny's future where it was really kind of. It was bleak. There was some dark yeah, days. What's going on here? Like, is this game gonna survive? Are we gonna want to keep playing this game like the way they're talking about it? But man, it's been a turnaround year for Destiny Two. Yeah, it really Absolutely. has. Yep, it's only looking better. And like I said, there's a resurgence in popularity and people talking about it. like the numbers are. I think M Tash has been talking about. It. He's getting stronger numbers than Forsaken, and he had a great, great turnout with Forsaken. So the right. the popularity yeah. the the interest level has been blown up for Destiny. I agree with him 100% too, because like I started everything fresh recently, right? And uh, I expected YouTube to be a complete disaster and nightmare. But for some reason, all these Destiny videos just keep popping on my channel. And I'm literally about to pass Twitch with my YouTube that I only just, I just like barely make videos for. That's amazing. So it's like, 
Yeah, I know. Like, I can't even believe yeah, it. Like crazy. I made a video about that, the Duke, that hand cannon that I like to use. And, you know, in a brand new channel, it's got 20,000 views. That's amazing. It's just like, yeah. what? Right. Like, how does that even work? You know, so That's it's just, crazy. it's, it's like blowing you, my mind. YouTube's algorithm has gotten a lot better recently. Yeah, like, I mean. If you make a video that people actually like watch all the way to the end, like it, it gets recommended a lot more than, yep. you know, the clickbaity stuff that kind of used to get. Well, clickbait's still really factored in because it's clickbait still, it still works. It's very powerful. Clickbait, you just, clickbait still works to help get people to click on it, but the YouTube algorithm seems to be recommending, in addition to things that people watch, things that people watch to the end. Yeah. It's like right. click through rate and how long they stick around and if they engage with the content right. via likes or comments, all those are factored into it popping up and being like, you should watch this. So yeah. I'd still say to this day, if like if you're a brand new content creator, uh, YouTube still is one of the best platforms to just straight up grow on because it's the right. it's like the biggest search engine for content for inf information. Yeah. So even though it's like the the advertising content matching type of stuff is a pain in the ass, and sometimes there's a <laughs> cesspool have... of comments, like it still is one of the best. <laughs> we platforms. got nailed on one of the DCP videos the other day. I saw it some random. Like it, got, it got seriously. Yeah, it got a. Uh... Like, I can't remember what the exact wording of it was, but basically demonetized. And I, I watched the video over again, and I didn't even swear on it. <laughs> like, yeah. It was clean. <laughs> was it yeah, somebody just don't really it? check that stuff? Was some random? No, it wasn't a claim. No, it wasn't a claim. It was not suitable for a younger audience or whatever, or for advertising. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that makes so sense. I, you know, I, I um, disputed it, and it went through. So Ah, they were like, this briar is... Just so filthy. Not Briars, suitable. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. that camera, dude. <laughs> now we're never going to get monetized ever again. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you guys want to do some Twitter questions? Are we at, are, yeah. Anything else in the Destiny sure. world? Damn, it's that time already? I was... 714? Some good good talks we had going on. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely. When Destiny's good, it's it's amazing. Yeah. There's no but other all franchise I want to talk like about it. Is Destiny and all I want to play is Destiny. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, before we get into the story question, I want to ask but wife one thing. What is September looking like for you? Mm. So we got Destiny Shadow keep coming out. Are you a Monster Hunter player? Um, no, I'm a big Borderlands player though. You're a big Borderlands and fan. Okay. So I I've only streamed Borderlands like twice now, but I've played so much Borderlands in my life. Like it's silly but um i cannot wait for borderlands 3 and to be at the same time as shadow keep is a complete nightmare to me yep i have no idea what i'm gonna do about <laughs> it really it, but is <laughs> i literally i will i'll be playing like i'll have my mouse and keyboard set up for destiny and then i'll have a controller over here for some borderlands I'm that's just what play you both. have to do <laughs> like, play that, like that's time. that's what we were saying that we need to find a way to be able to play all the games at once yeah, because there's there's literally too many games for once. Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna be I'm just gonna be stuck inside playing games 24 seven. But what, I'm really already working on a new dual stream setup. Except it's two games at <laughs> yeah. once instead of two streamers yeah. at once. <laughs> two games at once. Can exactly. you be in both directories? Yeah, that's the next thing to figure out. Set up another account. <laughs> there that's you go. True. Yeah, band wipe, band wipe alt. You know, or like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, um, it, that's how to do it. September, Jay Cooper is asked, be nuts, man. Yeah, September's crazy. Yep. It's like it's it's weighing on me. <laughs> it's looming. Yeah. I'm like, man, the summer's so nice. Destiny's yeah. great. This is fun. Oh my god, September is coming. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What am I gonna do? Uh, Jay Cooper says, "I used to watch you all the time with Lucky. I just want to know what your fondest memory is with Lucky." fondest memory oh geez yeah. probably the time where we had to get matching butt tattoos <laughs> so that that was was a similar goal. story I've, did I've you follow that. through on this like did yeah you i've got a both you guys fell through right wow both we both of you did, did it. it yeah we did it together wow. Interesting. i thought our butts on the illegal. tattoo parlor table and <laughs> it was a uh, it was an interesting experience to say the least was it a did it, it poked right it poked. It was it was my first tattoo, <laughs> and it was. I'm gonna be honest. It was not pleasant. Are not you pleasant. squirmish? Yeah. Squirmish with needles? Um, no. I'm usually I'm pretty good. I have a pretty good pain tolerance too. But like, 
stabbing something in your butt a bunch of times and like just <laughs> dragging it around is just like yeah, that's not fun deep cuts in your butt I feel like not it grates yeah. grates on your butt cheek <laughs> well and then sitting in the chair to stream oh, the next day too it's just like, oh man like it was and you got to put lotion on it or whatever and it's just like gotta apply like lotion on the regular weirdo. Yeah, so on a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was an interesting time, that's for sure. That does sound interesting, huh? Yeah, I I'm, you know, I'm just that with one uh, impressed that somehow. you follow through with it. You know? Same, you yeah, actually did totally. what you said you were gonna do. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. Me, very impressive. I mean, Super follow impressive. through, dude. <laughs> the follow through also, is actually, now that I'm thinking about it too, though, I might have a better memory, and that might be when we carried Tifu in trials in D1. And he was, mm. it was original trials and he was level 20 and he tried to shoot a guy with a Gallahorn and it didn't kill him. Oh my God, get out of here. That's amazing. <laughs> we weren't immune, but it, it didn't quite kill them. And we carried him <laughs> all the way to the lighthouse and all he did was just sit in the corner and go invis all the time as a hunter. That is and, amazing. Uh, <laughs> back in the day when Tifu was just a little guy, you know? So yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was actually Destiny really good. Destiny Tifu. Destiny Tifu, that yeah. was That was when you could actually just squat in one place and go invisible. Yep. Yeah, you could just crouch for a few seconds. And <laughs> that, that was That's a good incredible. time to be alive. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It really was. Uh, Coldheart says, "Should fusion rifles like Aaron's Hill or Wise's Rebuke be nerfed?" No. Nah. Let's let's dig into this actually, because I this okay. I forgot. I actually wanted to ask you, Ben, uh, but wipe if you felt like they're too strong or needed to be curtailed in some way in the, in the sandbox honestly no they're a really unique position between sniping and shotgunning um and you know shotguns have a really solid instant kill mm -hmm. you know like you get you get up in their face you have a tactical movement or whatever you want to call it and you get up in their face close enough and you blast them that's a one hit kill sniping any range you you line that dot up they're dead you know and so it's like there's a really interesting middle ground that is like kind of hard to fill sometimes if you're not like an aggressive sniper and maybe you're a little passive shotgunner that mm. fusioning just fits perfectly because it's not yes. instant almost no matter what it's not instant even if you like pre-charge and peek a corner like yep. it's it's really it's it's hard to use like it is hard to use even with backup plan like it's not easy yeah you can get some pretty crazy mapped kills like you can get some pretty gnarly kills but like a lot of times, you know, if you face a really good sniper, you're going to peek out and try and fusion them and you're just going to get dropped before you even shoot. They're going to headshot you. And yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then there's a lot of times where you try and shoot a shotgunner and you just get dropped before you can even, the, before the charge even goes yep. out, you know? Yeah. Right. And, and or, yeah. I was going to say on top of that, because it's hit scan, as soon as you die, the bolts disappear. So yep. like half the bolts can hit and then you die from that shotgun or melee yeah. or something. And then the rest of the bolts aren't going to get produced because you're dead because of the hit scan product of it. And you don't even trade. And it's like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. You know, not to mention if you miss, you've got a lot of time before that second follow up shot. Mm -hmm. So exactly. It's yeah. just like, yeah. So it's just I, I don't think they need to be nerfed at all. Honestly, I think that they're in a good spot because you can definitely map, but it's not as consistent as it looks, I guess, yeah. at the map mm -hmm. kills. So Yeah, somebody who's really good with a sniper is going to just outrange a, a, a fusion yeah. way more consistently. Like, it's just yes. across the board. The other thing, too, that I've noticed is that if you get shot at at all when you're trying to charge up a, a fusion, mm -hmm. that cone just <laughs> spreads everywhere. <laughs> It's awful. It really does. Yeah. It's it's like it feels like you just dropped the gun and it's kind of just spraying out yep. like a hose, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're just like, like, oh, there it like, goes. Oh, I just shot all the bolts across the screen. Okay, well, that's <laughs> that's useless cuz somebody one yep. <laughs> one tapped me with a uh, a last word. Yeah. So, yep. So you, it's yep. like it's it's a positioning tool. You have to get the drop on somebody before they get the drop on you. And if you do happen to get a kill in the middle of them shooting you, you just got lucky with RNG. Yeah. yeah. Straight straight yeah. up. Yep. And that, yeah, that's why I like to use the backup plan one because you just, it charges so fast. You just, yeah. you almost don't even worry about that, you know? So, but honestly, even my role, I feel like my role is like a quote unquote God role, right? If I'm playing comp against really hard opponents, I'll probably put a shotgun or a sniper on. Like yeah. it's, it's, it doesn't feel like it's better than either of those yeah. at what they do. So you just, you just don't use it really. Like I don't, I don't think it needs to be nerfed at all, but yeah. maybe that's just me. Yeah. It's a fun gun, but if like, if you're consistently headshotting people, with a sniper, that's going to be what you use. Yeah. Or even if you're a really good shotgunner, right? 
like a really good shotgunner can yep. yeah. jump around and outplay someone using a fusion rifle. So yeah. it's, it's it's like you said, it just plays in that really awesome mid range area, and it, it does a really good job at that. Yeah. It's nice to see him kind of come up to the prominence too, because you know in Dusty One they just got nerfed so frequently, Ugh. so you know like all the time they were getting nerfed. And they're one of the most unique weapons in Destiny, you know, to, to see yep. them not be yeah. usable. It sucks. But what's funny is there's a really strong, like, passionate opposing force about them in the Crucible. There is. People yeah. get really angry about Arantel. <laughs> you know what I get angry about? Every time I get killed with a mountaintop or an Oarwings Mall. Like, that is <laughs> the most frustrating thing. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I just get so triggered when somebody blows me up. It's frustrating. I'm just like, <laughs> come on. Especially hunters jumping around with mountaintop 20 oh, feet yes, in the yeah, air, just yeah. like, mm. and then recluse Guilty. tickling me to death. <laughs> yeah, that is that's that is the most triggering thing. I would take fusions any day over uh, mountaintop. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris asked specifically for band wipe. What's one gameplay change you think Bungie could make to improve the comp playlist? Mm. to improve the comp playlist gameplay change i have a really weird view about that i guess i i would say it's probably pretty unique but like i um i personally i don't really like control because i feel like it's it's it should be like domination rather than actually kill points mm. if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah um, it should be zone control right? it should be zone control in my opinion i feel like that's a more competitive uh thing yeah. also basically if not completely remove heavy that's a big thing for yes. me because the heavy the snowballing that you can do with a machine gun with a spectral blade hunter that just keeps going invis and seeing you through walls the snowball you can do with that and then generate orbs and by that time you know you've gotten a lot of machine gun kills you got a bunch of super kills oh heavy's yeah. back up again and you have like the control of the map so you just keep getting heavy keep getting all that stuff like that's really painful to play against um and then on yeah. top of that I love Countdown because I came from Call of Duty Search and Destroy. Um, and I know this sounds silly and a lot of people are probably going to hate me for it, but I honestly believe in Countdown specifically, they should remove radar mm -hmm. and the bomb plant noise. The defuse noise is fine, but the plant noise and the radar should go away. And then it would be like such a better game mode mm -hmm. to me personally. Interesting. Also revive tokens. I don't like one revive, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. I feel like it would be a little more fun. It, Trials used to be that way, no revives, and then um, not obviously with the zones, but like, you know, if you could sneak around and get some revives, you know, it really makes for some big plays. So yeah. it was fun. Yeah. But yeah, that's interesting. I was going to say, um, yeah, that heavy ammo stuff. That's a no brainer. Heavy ammo needs a big change. Yeah. That's just straight up broken right now. It, <laughs> it needs to go back to either being a single round if it is like countdown, uh, like it wasn't trials, or just straight up no heavy or just. I, I, I don't understand why they moved away from heavy ammo inbound in like Destiny 1. Yeah. It'd be like, Shax is like, yo, heavy ammo's up in 30 seconds. Yeah. Go get it. And there's like two sides. <laughs> and you have this really fun heavy ammo thing that happens where people got it or they mm -hmm. challenge it with the super. And then it was done. You're like, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Then it, it was just done too. And both teams had access to it or you could, you know, make a big play and try and get both power ammo. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Those, like, but trying to make that big play was some really fun it was moments super in Destiny. Fun. Mm -hmm. you know? it That's was. all I did was just, you okay, guys, we're going to try. <laughs> yeah, you had a yep. whole team that would just, like, run to this box, and you knew that if you could get, like, <laughs> like a Nova Bomb off or something at, on that box, you were about to wipe out their entire team you were about to and get steal their heavy. Yeah. Imagine yeah. the <laughs> missile plays that could be done in D2 with that. Oh, right? Imagine. The missile. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so my fun. God. Yeah, I that I just I don't understand why they got away from that because that was such a perfect setup for like six six. It was a clown around. Yeah, great. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Adam D says, "How do you feel about people invading in Gambit and intentionally standing still to help <laughs> others get Lumina?" <laughs> More power to you. It's Destiny yeah. community at its finest, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, it sucks. You're throwing the game, kind of. But, like, it's only going to be for the next, like, what, week or two? And then it'll go back to normal for the most part. Like, yeah. there's not really... It's not a super competitive game mode to begin with. So, like, I don't know. God, I feel like... God bless those souls. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, happily, send them a GG. Happily yeah. contribute back you, if friend. they need it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, Adam exactly. says, I, 
I play to win because I generally enjoy the game mode, so I'm sympathetic to the argument that it is boosting or throwing. Yeah, I, I see I mean, that. It but technically like, is. It, it, it absolutely also, is. It's, also kind. <laughs> it's 100% throwing. It's yeah. also a kind act. It's fun. It is fun. People do that, you know, in various other activities for various other things in the past. So, like, you know, I remember, what was it? There was some, I think it's the grenade launcher kills for Mountaintop. Mm -hmm. uh yeah. there was some people that were just like yo we meet, match them in comp and we're like getting wrecked right and they're like listen man if you let me get a, a, a quad with the power ammo we'll just back out or whatever you know <laughs> it's like every once in a while you know we're three rounds up in survival we'll let them get we'll let them blow us up for a round and then finish it off like i've been that guy you know i've, I've let people blow me up to get mountain top that's so awesome it's like, you know oh like, for sure mountain top is such a fun. pain in the ass yeah it really was <laughs> mm -hmm. but <laughs> yep uh, Maximilian Tutty says, would you prefer a new element, class, or race in Destiny 3 if you could only have one? Oof. I would choose element. A reason I choose element is because with that, we're going to be getting three new subclasses. Ooh, right? wow. Yeah. Because we'd be getting Good a point. hunter, new element. We'd be getting a bunch of new guns with the different element as well. So I think that that adds more variety to the sandbox if we went with, with an element. Yeah, I'd rather. I think I'd rather have an element too. I don't need another warlock or it's variation. Right. You're absolutely around. right. We don't need another warlock. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> That's the last fucking thing we need. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? I can't. It makes me nauseous. <laughs> I say element would be awesome, even if it's something weird too, like something that you wouldn't even think yeah, of, like some stupid. darkness element, like have a taken subclass, you know? I mean, like, I would love that'd be that. Incredible. Like it could be something totally cool, you know? Mm -hmm. But I would love that a lot. I think element is the right answer here, but man, I really would love an Elixney as a playable character. I think that would be dope because it be could cool. really be like a completely different way to play the game, right? It could have a different sure. feel to it, different, you know, just. As opposed to having like you know the same basic jump for all characters, but then it's the second jump that makes it a little different. Like the Lixney could be totally different, you know. I think that could be really cool. That would a be fallen cool. Fallen playable character would. Be would oh yeah, it would be really fun to have a fallen. Oh, this is where we all pick different ones, and then we get everything. <laughs> so you you pick oh, yeah. the uh, Lixney. I'll pick. Okay. I'll pick a uh, a new race that we fight against, and now we have everything in the sandbox. There you go. All right, I like Done. it. Now we have everything. I like it. Oh, Perfect. Easy. Awesome. <laughs> I agree with all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, Nasu420 says, I will be moving to PC once cross save comes around. I have a 144 hertz monitor and would like to utilize that. What specs would you uh, recommend to get 144 FPS consistently on like medium graphic settings? Oh, medium. Mm. So 144 consistently is not easy. For the Crucible, it's pretty easy. But for PvE, it's going to dip in areas because it's CPU dependent. It's like you could probably do that with the GTX 1080. But if you have like a like a like one of the latest i7 generation or latest generation i7 Intel chips, then you're going to be better off consistently getting that. Also, you're going to have to do 1080p to consistently get that as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I have, I have an i7. I think he's talking 1080p. Yeah. Okay. I have an i7 and a 1080 Ti, and I get like at least 90 frames in between 90 and 140 for just the various activities. So, but I play in 1440. Yeah. 1440. So, um, okay. You know. Yeah. When I, I, on a 240 hertz monitor, I'd often see 180 FPS, but it was not consistently. Mm, yeah. Above. If you're playing 1080, like. It should be no problem, really. There's a few places in the game that have some sort of weird CPU lock thing that happens, like in the back the of the tower church. Is one of them. Yeah, the tower yeah, because of all the connections. The but back of the church and EDZ consistently will drop it down to like below 90, which is if you're used to high FPS, below 90 is a big yikes. Uh, yeah. You notice you're like, whoa, my eyes. What happened to my eyes here? Why do I suddenly need to vomit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll you'll see it happen back there, but that's like a it's a CPU thing technically. Also, the the Super RTX 2070 was like announced a day or two ago, right? Yeah, and that's apparently on yeah. par with a 1080 Ti, and it's 500 bucks. Really? Right? Yeah, that is crazy. 
yo, super oh. not a good time to build a PC. Like, wait a couple of weeks, and like AMD's got all new processors coming out that are supposed to be really competitive with Intel's best stuff, but cheaper. And AMD's talking new graphics cards and these uh, NVIDIA RTX cards, the super RTX cards are going to hit the market. Mm. So there could be like some real pricing uh, changes in the graphics card market like really, really soon. Plus AMD's new processors could really shake things up as to if AMD could start hitting like you know, like the top end of the like the high frame rate stuff, like that could be a game changer. That could be a game changer, absolutely. So maybe so just wait a few weeks, I'd say. Yeah, maybe just circle look at these back reviews as they come out. Circle back to this question in about two to four weeks. If you're trying to get a PC ready for September, like yeah, pull the trigger around mid August to build it and get all that stuff because yeah. you're probably going to be uh, best set up at that point for yeah, all yeah. the info. It, it doesn't take long to build a PC. Like it takes four to eight hours like for a new time builder it might take like a, a day maybe budget maybe. another four hours what really takes time is just ordering the parts and getting them all delivered mm -hmm. that's kind of where you know, like Making the waiting sure all parts work together yeah yep. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, pc part picker is great for that super good for it'll, that it'll tell you if you pick something that's not compatible uh but yeah 144 hertz is not easy to sustain but again, in PvP, like it's usually above 140 for me yeah. on most maps. Yeah, but you have a 1080 Ti and a i7. Yeah, 1080 Ti, i7, 7700K. Yeah. So it's it's now it's approaching two years old. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. Mm -hmm. But it works. PvP is not too draining on it. So. Yeah. Exactly. No. Yep. The Dusty runs really nice. Like it's just it runs it really runs well. Smooth. Yep. It is. Yeah. Uh, Nasu420 says, never mind. Luke says, <laughs> there was a report out that put D2 as a 10th best selling game on the Xbox whilst it wasn't on PS4. Why did Activision still not consider Destiny 2 a success with these stats? Because Activision was 10th best make billionaire money, not like millionaire. Yeah, money. right? Yeah. Okay. They want some. Yeah. We're looking into drive bugattis not ferraris you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> they're looking for bugatti date. they're looking for not bezos Ferrari, money right. they're not looking for chump change here they would yeah. they want their own private space industry all right yeah 10th best on xbox and not even registering in the top 10 on ps4 not a great showing i would say for a game that costs this much to develop <laughs> I, it also just comes down to the fact that like whatever deals they cut and whatever kind of bonuses and targets that they didn't hit, like they'll have some crazy target and don't hit it, but they'll still sell a ton of copies and technically be profitable. But in the investor's eyes, they didn't hit a target, so it's like, well, I guess we gotta. Well, you didn't make more weight. money than last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not infinitely yeah, growing, huh? Well, yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, to, uh, take a look at this. Yeah. <laughs> This Veyron's not going to gas itself up. <laughs> uh, Carl L. Smith says, It's been a while since I had a question to ask, so here's one. Since Outbreak Prime came to Destiny 2, do you think the other raid exotic weapons will as well? Yes. I think every yes. weapon from Destiny 2, every exotic weapon from Destiny 2 is going to come to Destiny 2. The Vex? Or, you think the Destiny Vex Mythic class is coming back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I think everyone. We'll it was will. such an I, iconic gun. I think they should bring it. I hope that. it does. But it comes back to cha challenge all the people that hate uh, Aaron Till. True. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. If they bring back Vex, they're going to have to nerf all the fusion rifles again. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> right? Just, just make it an auto, okay? It's okay. Just change the picture to look like a fusion rifle in the kill feed. Yeah, exactly. When they started doing the thing where they started bringing exotics back that, that do different things than they did in Destiny 1 then I knew for sure, oh, they're definitely bringing everything back. That's my thought. Because they yeah. can bring back something called the Plan C, and it just doesn't do what the Plan C did. Or, you know, they could bring, uh, what was the sniper rifle that had infinite ammo? Uh, icebreaker. icebreaker. They can bring back a gun and name it the Icebreaker. It looks like the Icebreaker. It just doesn't have that particular thing. They'll call it game They'll call it Ice Broken. <laughs> ice Broken. <laughs> exactly. It like shoots it. chunks of ice. Just... <laughs> 
<laughs> that new element, though. Yeah. New element. There yeah. you go. It's the first ice. ice ice weapon. Yo, and Coldheart finally gets an actual element that's that's yeah, legit. Yeah, I could freeze. Right. Cornholio says, "What's your favorite Crucible loadout and subclass in competitive PvP today?" Competitive in comp specifically. Yeah. I mean, does Lord of Wolves and One Eyed Mask count? Like, <laughs> yeah. Today, yeah. if I was going to go into comp today, the most like, competitive. If you needed class, to win, you want to. I'm win, trying to win. I'm gonna use ass. Lord of Wolves, One Eyed Mask, and <laughs> probably Bottom Tree Striker, dude. Like. That's what that's the that's the thing right now. Would way. I hate myself for it? Yes. I would. <laughs> so the cost. I would probably play three dirty, games. Would you need a shower? The cost is I would your play soul. three games and close it. <laughs> yes. Say, yeah. Every every <laughs> shot out of the Lord of Wolves costs a portion of yeah. your soul. Fractures your soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, I I can't use that, but you know. It's effective. I mean <laughs> it is effective. If I it's was actually effective. trying to go in and not use Lord of Wolves, I'd probably run a missile with um Probably just a sniper and uh and the rose right now. I love the rose. Mm -hmm. Lord of Wolves with like more Lord of Wolves, right? And that's how <laughs> and a machine gun. That's how it works. Hammerhead. Yeah. Two Lord of Wolves and a machine gun. There you go. <laughs> uh I I was a little surprised that the truth did catch on a little bit more. It's been really popular in Gambit. Yeah. I mean it's very good, right? It's you get three rockets, which is better than two, yeah. and it has. Tracking. And they're all in the magazine mm -hmm. too, right? And the blast radius is crazy too. Yeah, it's just like it, to me personally, it doesn't quite track as well as the original one did. No, not right. at all. And right. Yeah, and so it kind of just like it feels just slightly better than a regular tracking rocket. Mm -hmm. So it's like, eh, do I really want to use it when I could have fifty rounds with a hammerhead? Yeah, and the the biggest thing is that you have to give up an exotic slot for it. So you're not going to use Lord of Wolves, yeah, true. or you're not going to yeah. use an exotic hand cannon, assuming you're on PC. So, uh, Dylan says, question for Tefty specifically. Oh boy! If you had to choose between playing the whole way through The Witcher side quests and everything, <laughs> or creating a warlock from scratch and doing every campaign and quest line, why would it be 2024 and still not done? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> is that a question? Yeah. I'm going to go just a, with... I feel like this is just a burn. Yeah, yeah I felt like gonna... that too. And usually I omit that kind of stuff, but not this time. <laughs> My response is yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm, Good yeah. Think on that one, Dylan. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, AC Hanstead said, what would you guys think if Gambit Prime became weekends only making it more like Trials. I love it, but having it available all the time doesn't seem to help it stand out from standard Gambit. That's uh, not going to help Gambit Prime. Yeah, I mean, does it have, like, some special reward that comes out every week, you know? Yeah. Like... It's going to have... So the, the thing that made Trials so special and would make a new mode so special is the awesome loot, the fact that it's a completely different game mode, not just you know, slightly different because that's the problem that we had with trials initially is that it was comp, but it had, you know, slightly different way of working and some different loot. It needs to be its own unique thing. Yep. To really yeah. feel unique. Yeah. Gambit has really missed a, a few marks. I've been thinking about this also. I think like the fact that it just it slams two things together that a lot of people just aren't really a fan of. And it's dying mm -hmm. to somebody one V fouring with heavy ammo and having wall hacks. All the, the time. heavy ammo, dude. That's annoying, just straight up. I mean, I can see why you'd want to do that all the time because you have heavy ammo and or a super and you can see where everybody is all yep. the time every time you invade. Like, I get why that's appealing. And there's a lot of people that want to burn bosses like a strike boss. But then you have this, like, invader coming who sees exactly where you're at all the time. Like, I think those fundamentals just don't mix well with the majority of the population. I think they need to have more things that, like, alter your actual sandbox the when you deposit the moats like suddenly a burn is active or like um uh blackout or whatever is active like because they deposited 50 moats in this one box and suddenly they have to deal with grounded for a perk in their sandbox i think those would actually be more interesting for a lot of people mm -hmm. the gambit oh, prime invading system it just is too fucking frequent like there's just an invader around all the time 
Again, yeah, they, they just they have gets like heavy it, ammo. Like, oh, come on, I just want this yeah. goddamn and, round. And they just come over with <laughs> infinite machine gun or truth, yeah, even. yeah, like, yeah. Like I'm for a while, I actually all prefer regular too. gambit at this point with their new like the the final round being just the boss burn. Mm-hmm. Like I actually like regular gambit better than prime right now. I'd, I'd do prime just for the chance of a spare rations if I'm going to force myself to do gambit. <laughs> yeah. Sure, you yeah. get like special weapons. Yeah, yeah good. Spare rations is really good. The sniper is good. Yeah, there's some really good weapons yep. in there. Goody says, "What's your favorite underrated gun in Destiny 2? Underrated. Yeah. Oh, Rat King. Really? Rat King. I love Rat King. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah, Rat King's great. <laughs> it's really good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Take it. I like the Duke because with a missile, I can two tap people, and that's yeah, that's it. That sounds that's very life. appealing. Um, I don't know. I had the Aaron till it's pretty underrated. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting more highly rated as time goes on. Yeah. For the record, Aaron Till has been this good all of Forsaken. Yeah, it has. People and are people just have realizing. only noticed recently. So that, I think I personally would say that that counts. Yeah, it's kind of been idea. a secret, right? That's yeah. true. It also, I still have fun with that sniper. Tef, you have the same one. It's with the same roll on it too. It's fate of something. Oh, fate right? Christ Yeah, fate Christ Fall. Fate Christ yep. was my jam yeah. up until I got a beloved that feels good. Yeah, I'm Is still that not gotten that beloved. One? Yeah, the crucible. Yeah. One. Yep. Yep. yeah. I, I just swapped my beloved with the exact same role for a fate cries, like a snapshot moving target one. For some reason, I just like I like the so it feels feel. good, doesn't it? It does. And the suppressor sound on it is just like Yeah, it's oh. cool. It sounds awesome. I I actually like the scope also, even though it's a little bit further in. I'm mm-hmm. just maybe I'm just used to it. Um, but there's something about it that just feels good. Yeah. Yeah, I like I that gun a lot. Uh, Zagarian says, question for everybody, what would you hope the end game is like in Shadowkeep? At this point, power level seems like a number and doesn't make us feel as powerful. What would you like the end game to be like in death in Shadowkeep? Uh, can I say trials? Like <laughs> I think that's fair. That is fair. I don't think it's gonna I happen though, but like <laughs> I know. A PvP end game would be great. Dedicated it servers? Would be great. It'd be so good. That's not <laughs> end luck. game, Tefty. That's just dedicated you service do doesn't come quest. and give me you, loot. Long quest, you have to hit. <laughs> Congratulations, legend. you hit level eight hundred and have unlocked you dedicated, dedicated servers. servers. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to file it down, just for the people who need it, right? Yeah, you got to grind blind well to get dedicated servers. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. grind gambit. Oh, <laughs> these are hard yikes. <laughs> I, for end game stuff, I just want something that's satisfying and feels rewarding to jump in and grind. Like I don't, but a lot of times Bungie will have a a, a single reward for a long grind that's boring, but the reward is awesome. Yeah. Or they'll or they'll have things that are yeah. fun to grind, but those rewards are kind of lackluster. It's like I like a grind and a end game that has a lot of activities that feel fun and rewarding as I play them. Yeah, I think they nailed it with Menagerie, and I think they should really double down on this line of thinking. Yes, like this, agreed. this also reminds great. me a lot of the. I always forget the name of this thing too. The Mars thing that Vicarious Vision escalation, escalation protocol, yeah, which Thank is you. still escalation fun. Protocol, it's still fun, right? And like this and Menagerie have a similar feel to me, and they also have a buttload of cool things that you can earn. I think Menagerie really doubled down on like how many cool things you can earn in it. And uh, like I think this is really the kind of sniffing along the right path here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Imagine if Escalation Protocol had come out after weapon rules and after <sighs> all that good stuff. Like, Amazing! I yeah. could just see myself grinding out so many snipers and shotguns and yep. even the hand cannon. I know it's 180, but I would have grinded out some crazy roll for it. Like yeah, totally. Yeah, for sure, it would have been crazy. You know, I still go to Mars. Like, you know, I'll need to like grind out like headshots for an auto rifle. So I'll just like go to Mars and like start up an escalation protocol. And all of a sudden there's like six people doing it with me. People just start joining, right? Well, fuck yeah. it. Let's go all the way. <laughs> yeah. That is really you know, cool like, too. That unique start. Like you don't load it yeah. up like Menagerie, for example, you just, you're just there and it's going on. So yeah. jump in. Yeah. People yeah. just join up. It's really well done. I just, I can't believe Blindwell wasn't a similar thing. Like everything in the dream yeah. city 
could suddenly activate like that type of escalation protocol because it was so good. I feel, I feel like if Blindwell wasn't tucked away so far, it would be a different story. Yes. Like definitely. imagine if, True. imagine if you just teleported right into Blindwell. Like, so many people would just teleport there. Like that's part of the reason that I don't do it every week is actually literally because I have to go talk to the lady somewhere. I probably got a sparrow all the way over there. And mm -hmm. then I got to teleport back or figure out how to get back into the blind well. And then yep. I can do it. Like there's and then so much. And you see that someone's doing it, right? Like at least with right. EP, you could load in. You could be like, oh, someone's doing escalation protocol right now. Let oh, they're already on level in. five? Well, exactly. no. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So for clarity, one of my biggest problems with Blindwell is the fact that it's one of those things that Destiny does every once in a while that restricts your movement to like a certain area and it becomes very much stand in one spot and shoot. Mm -hmm. And it's just a boring activity is for, I don't know, what's it take? Seven minutes to get through the Blindwell up to the boss. You are literally standing in an area so you don't take damage and just shooting out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there's no movement, there's no anything. Well, you know, the, like the fact that there's no unique rewards specifically to it. Like a, if there was like a set of weapons. Sure, that's true, but the activity itself is boring. Mm -hmm. If there was a if there was a unique reward, I would do it, but I wouldn't I still wouldn't enjoy doing it like I enjoy doing yeah. the menagerie. You know? Yeah. The only thing that makes it fun for me is just spamming blade barrage. Yeah, yeah, that is fun. The super spam is pretty cool. I do yeah. agree. Uh, I do want to say for some clarity, Luke Smith is in chat and he said that like a lot of these things aren't built serially. So it's not like they built Escalation Protocol right. and then Blindwell and just completely forgot about the things that they learned from Escalation Protocol. Usually mm -hmm. built in tandem because of multiple teams. So that's ah. that's usually why these things don't necessarily share those traits all the time, which is probably why Menagerie is very different from um, uh, Reckoning. Reckoning feels very unrewarding. But Reckoning was probably built at the same time Menagerie was built, right? Because multiple teams doing that stuff. So that's why those things don't necessarily share traits. But in the future, it would be really, really, really freaking cool to see Escalation Protocol level activities in like as many of those public spaces as possible. Because that mm -hmm. makes yeah. it makes those like imagine loading into EDZ and some crazy things going on there. That's Escalation Protocol style. And suddenly you're like, dude, I want to stay here and do this until the end of the round because this is just fun shooting all these crazy Elixnees showing up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That would be really cool, especially if they had different rewards on each planet, you know? Yeah. Like, that would be awesome. Yeah. And Devrim K is nutting up because all the crazy stuff's going on. <laughs> be like, ah, there's more. Yeah. It's like, yes, <laughs> this is awesome. Right. You finish all of his waves, he just gives you the no land beyond back. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. So. Uh, Z Element says, question for all. If you were to pair any two raid bosses up as a couple, who would they be? <laughs> raid as bosses? A couple? Any raid, Destiny 1 or Destiny 2. Do like sub bosses count? Let's go with just main bosses. Main main bosses? Yeah, just like the last boss. Hmm. Mm. I feel like uh, Crota is going to be one of those. He'll just follow you around all the time. You know, like you're never going to get a free <laughs> moment. He's just going to keep following you around. So Crota's out. <laughs> Interesting. That's a weird question. I'm going to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I'm having a tough yeah. time. Like, I don't know how to um, answer that. Galrin and can I choose the sisters? I want to choose the sisters. All right. From King's Go Hall. for it. Kind of like doing Thanks. like a, like a. <laughs> uh huh. Like Briar, yes. So <laughs> crazy you Ray you Utah know? thing there. <laughs> Utah thing. <laughs> what a finish! My God. <laughs> well, I don't know. Would it be it's weird if Crota and uh, and uh, what's his name Oryx got together? Yeah, that would be weird. I would say that. Yeah. Then that's totally. my answer. I mean, that's incest. <laughs> so I would say, yeah. I feel maybe like the hive isn't above that, right? Yeah. 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 That sounds all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. We'll just say Oryx and Riven and we'll call it good. There we go. Space dragons. Space dragons, Sonic exactly. The Hedgehog says Does sauerkraut belong in mashed potatoes, juices and all? Depends on the quality of the sauerkraut. Some, I've never gross. even heard of this. 
but it actually, I could imagine it being okay. It adds a little bit of tang uh-huh. to your mashed potatoes. No, I can totally tang. see this. Yeah. The, the stringiness, though, of the cabbage might be a little weird. See, that's what I'm saying. If the kraut is not good, not quality, then hard pass. Yeah. But if it's like some really yeah. good kraut. What about just on the top? <laughs> like just kraut on the top? Yeah, like a garnish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, then what about a baked potato? Well, that's what if it wasn't uh, that's in even better. <laughs> like, because that's just I, another on, topic. I like, definitely see it on baked potato. Put on yeah. afterwards, obviously, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Well, you're not going to cook the kraut. You're not going to put it on before. Shit, you I'm just clarifying. I'm just making I mean, sure. You're not gonna <laughs> put it on it either. Just making sure we're on the same page. You're just going to you're going to fuck up the kraut, man. <laughs> 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 nice burnt layer too. Uh, uh, Dreadnought says. Would you rather be stuck in a quantum realm with Ant Man or stuck in space with Iron Man? Iron Man. I, I feel like Iron Man's just better to party with. Like if you're gonna be stuck for a while. Yeah, he'd be fun. It's just gonna be more fun to hang out with. Good stories. Well, Ant Man's pretty fun too, but that's like a little deep bit space. whiny, you know? <laughs> Who doesn't want to go to deep space? Like mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. The quantum realm is just man. trippy, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm going Iron Man Outer Space. Yep. All right. Well, I guess we all agree. For it, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. easy. All right. <laughs> What's the optimal loadout for encountering a dragon in the public restroom? In the public restroom, a dragon. So Riven shows up dragon? while you're yeah. using the bathroom. Yeah. Am I doing well, number one or number two? Mm. I don't know. Oof. You, I mean, you'd probably be fine because Doc's probably in there and he'll kick his butt. So you're right. Doc's vlogging it. <laughs> Doc will take care of it, dude. Yeah, you, we're good. We're good. He'll fight okay. a dragon, no problem. I'm gonna die in the bathroom to a dragon, and it's gonna be online. <laughs> no, no, you're gonna get if saved by the Doc. Die from the dragon, you know, the Doc will definitely save you. Yeah, no doubt. He's gonna jump in there and just be like, "Nah, nah, dragon." Please, Lord of Wolves, probably too. Lord of Wolves, yeah, that's all you need. I don't think it matters what gun or loadout you have. I think your speech skill better be a hundred, though. <laughs> to talk, you're gonna want to talk Absolutely. your way out of this situation. I mean, you get caught your you get caught with your pants down. It's never a good situation. Yeah, doesn't matter if you're rocking Lord of Wolves man, on top. Never, never a good situation. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay, usually not a good situation. <laughs> uh, Zachary Richard says. What has been everyone's worst date experience? Worst date experience? Worst yeah, I'm going to read you his. He, he included okay. his. Mine was to, has to be prom. My girlfriend at the time asked me to dance inside of prom, so we danced for a month in classes. So logically, I asked her to prom. She had already said yes to someone else, so I had a third-wheel prom situation. Wait, that was his girlfriend? Yeah, say, your story is not adding up here, Zachary. He said that my girlfriend. I was, going, I was going to prom with I mean, my girlfriend. Someone, yeah. someone asked her first. I mean, <laughs> right I mean, of first yeah. refusal, from my Canada. dude. <laughs> <laughs> was girlfriend, right? Was. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I guess she Uh-oh. moved on. Did she, she know your? It was she was your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's what it was. Um, Worst date. Experience. That doesn't really sound like a date. No. no, it doesn't. It just sounds like a bad experience. It, really it sounds like a miscommunication. Yeah. Mm. First date, I actually had a bad date with Taylor once. Um, yeah. We went mm. right when we were first started dating. We went to see this movie, um, and it was probably the worst movie I've ever seen. Like it mm-hmm. was terrible. I don't even remember what it was, and uh, it was about something. And we just we literally were just so fed up with it. And we just actually left. And like, that's not really a bad date, but like it ended up being better anyway. But like, it was a movie that I picked out and I felt like a complete idiot picking the world's stupidest movie. But I don't know. That's why I don't really have like, I'm, I don't know. I don't really have a, that's the best story I got. I don't really have one. Yeah. Honestly, I'm sure Brian has one with wrestling Molotov cocktails. Yeah. He's definitely got beers. a story. <laughs> There's a bear yeah, somewhere too. Yeah, definitely. Like I have one, but I can't really tell it. You know? Oh, that bad. Like it, it's not even bad. It's just not interesting. Like it's just boring. Yeah, I feel that. Um. Yeah, I don't really have a bad one either. That like, I got one. Let's hear it. 
This isn't okay. So it wasn't bad for me. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> this is a briar story for sure. Early on, when I was dating my wife, though, we went out one night, and uh, I brought her back to my house, and we had we had gone out for drinks, and we'd gone to this place called Pagliacci's, which is one of those Italian places that they make the noodles fresh right there. Oh, mm. it's just delicious, but it's known for like having these like ginormous servings right it's like you get a plate of pasta that's like mount pasta it's just nice. huge right it's one of the rare places that both has like you know way more food that you can eat but it's also delicious usually you get one or the other so i bring her back to my house and we're just talking and she just starts hurling in the driveway of my oh. house it's like probably our third date <laughs> Oh no! Wow, she Woo. is throwing up all over the food place poisoning. In my driveway. So, she must have been so embarrassed. Oh, right, yeah, so it wasn't great for her, but you know, it was fine for me. Kind of. Now everybody knows. Oh, man. <laughs> well, you win the third date barfs. Yeah, third date barfs. That's about the right time for that, you know. Yeah, brings you closer together. I'm yeah. Sure. Uh, Ringo the Dingo says, it's the season of opulence. What's the most decadent thing you'd want to do someday besides Ferrari Fridays? No, oh, that was my What's answer. What's the most decadent thing you'd like to do someday? Hmm. Hmm. Compete in the ACL. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to... American Cornhole League. Oh, no. <laughs> But make sure you're throwing gold beanbags, like gold. actual yeah. made of gold, yeah. like gold inside, you know? Those would be heavy, man. Gold's a heavy metal. Well, you got to be a heavy strong. bag you're tossing over there. This is, in a, this is a, a sport that they broadcast on ESPN. You got to you gotta know what you're getting into, right? That's true. <laughs> you got to be careful when you're thrown into that cornhole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for, okay. Okay. I want to buy a mansion, really big place, mm -hmm. and I'm going to dedicate at least half of it to create an inside forest for my cats. Inside forest. So they can Whoa. just inside like climb forest. all the trees. They yeah. can like run everywhere. A life size. They would plants love it. Fake plants. I would get enjoyment from. It's like a. a what room. kind of other animals are we getting in there? Squirrels. Yeah. Is there an ecosystem? Is there oh, deer? Those squirrels are getting. At yeah, like, well, I, what about, I don't know if my cats would eat squirrels actually. What about bugs? Maybe a bit too big. Squirrels are dead meat with cats around. Spiders. Cats are going to kill them. Yeah. How's <laughs> Put spiders. Yeah, how's the bug situation going to be in there? No idea. Just going to wing gonna it. There's going to be lots of trees. I'm just going to wing it. Oh, I watched what my cat eat a fly today, so I'm guessing there's not going to be a whole lot of bugs either. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a life-size terrarium type of thing going on there. I just want a, That'd just be want cool. a giant place for cats to run around, yeah. climb trees. Fair enough. Sounds good. And not uh, outside with all the dangerous people. Uh, like Briar. If I was going to be super decadent <laughs> on something, it'd probably have something to do with like vintage recording gear. Like buy, buy like a, <laughs> a, a whole vintage studio full of like 70s gear and like vintage synthesizers and all that stuff. That That's, that's honestly. How about a Moog? Those things go for like four thousand dollars. Oh, it would be like right it would be a room full of them. All right, was it a fourteen channel be, audio? Whatever. It would be a Neve desk with a bunch of old Mo Moog synthesizers. It'd be it'd be nuts, man. I'd have like a Fairchild compressor in there. Mm. Yeah. Honestly, I'm a simple man. All I want is a solid gold toilet mm. with a golden slash diamond AK forty seven sitting next to it. Diamond AK forty seven. Yeah, huh. that's it. Sitting right next. How many, to the how many kills you get to get that, that diamond camo for <laughs> that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Two hundred fifty headshots. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, gotcha. So it's so within reason. This is fucking within crazy. <laughs> fucking diamond AK. <laughs> uh, the Mohican Nine says you're on a flea market and you find a voodoo doll of yourself. What is the first thing you do with it? Buy it. Lock it up. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. yeah. Buy it, it, put it away it up, in a safe place. It. Yeah, put it in the bottom Don't of the let ocean. Let anyone else hunt the motherfucker who made it. <laughs> put it on eBay, dude. Yeah, yeah, give, it, give it to uh, give it to some bloodhounds to sniff out the person who made it. That's what. Oh, get revenge, huh? Mm-hmm. I live life on the edge. I'm selling it to the highest bidder. Damn. <laughs> That's why. Like, I gotta get that gold. Guarding, yeah. guarding 
fun charity incentive. You get to uh, yeah. biggest donator gets my voodoo doll. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, fair enough. That would be messed up though. Can you imagine? Yes, it sounds like a movie. Well, <laughs> sounds like a B B rate. That sounds like a movie you take it uh, on a di- first date. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that sounds like a movie I would act in. <laughs> Yikes. Probability asks, what is your favorite food to eat at 4th of July gatherings? Today, we're having ribs. What's your favorite 4th of July Ribs food? are great. Hot Everybody's dogs. Doing, uh, Hot dogs, burgers. Corn. Corn is American. It is. <laughs> Everything's corn. Everything's made from corn. Corn is good. Corn with some corn. Corn red. Red. corn. Good summer food. Lots of corn. Corn on the cob. Butter and salt on it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. How about the uh, Mexican corn? Oh, lots of corn. Or all the corn. We could have many different varieties of corn. We could have a a corn buffet. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dang. I don't know, man. I think probability with the ribs, though. Like, (laughs) smoked ribs outside. Everybody's kind of hanging out around the smoker, drinking some beers. You just smell that smoked flavor coming out of that thing all day. And then finally, it pays off. You know, hours after you put those things in, you finally get them out. And man, they're some of the most delicious ribs you can get. Got to labor over it. It is. It's a labor of love, though. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like raising a kid, except you eat it afterward. <laughs> oh, sounds like a briar type <laughs> kind of relationship. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's different. It's different. <laughs> oh man. You don't want to eat corn and play cornhole, briar. That sounds like sounds like a briar day. <laughs> Stream it too. Put on ESPN. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jay Cooper says dodgeball follow up question round two hot dog eating contest. Captains are Watts and Tefty. Same oh. rules. Three DCP, one wild card. Choose wisely. Also, thank you for the advice on my father question last week. Appreciate you all. Oh, it's awesome. So it's a hot dog eating contest. Hot dog eating contest. Dog Tefty eating contest. and Watts are captains. Pick a team. I'm I'm picking Patrick. All right, then I'm picking Briar. I bet Briar can Watts. pack. I bet Patrick will eat everything. But I can't I can't put away 15 pounds of crawfish. That's though. what I'm saying. He can do 15 <laughs> pounds of crawfish. Maybe he can do 15 pounds of hot dogs. Here's the thing, though. It translates. Here's the I'm thing, though. Sure. Patrick's unreliable. He didn't get the tattoo. So he right, might he say might show up. He might say he's gonna eat all those <laughs> hot dogs Yikes. and then just straight up. Mm. Not do wow. it. But you can't pick Pope some Bear dumb excuse why I can't eat hot dogs. Sorry, God, just the doctor Pope said I can't Pope have Bear all those. I'm like sorry. Gourmet fancy food, and if it's anything less, he says it's Taco Bell. So, <laughs> what yeah. if it was just sausages? Would he eat those? Ooh. Uh, it's got to be. It's got to be a certain like type of sausage. hot dog sized sausages. They're like full of onions and flavor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then he'll eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking with Briar as my first pick because I, I think you're going to be down right. to eat a lot of hot dogs. No, I do I'm, like a good, the I like one a hot thing, dog. The one thing Patrick will follow through with is food. So um, okay. I think I think this All right. Who's your pick. second pick? There's only... Was, oh, it's Pope and Fran, right? Pope, oh, Fran. No. Butt wipe is standing right here. And nobody oh, am I in this? But oh, that's you're the in it now, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're in I'm this bad now. at eating a hot dog eating contest. I got like three or four and I'm... Woo. <laughs> Oh, well, there we go. Now we know that he's not a wild <laughs> That question's answered. <laughs> as long as if there's no buns, maybe it's a different story. But nobody said anything about buns. I'm going to take Pope Bear because I think if if you make Pope really competitive, especially against Tefty, yeah. you got to fire him he'll up. Be, he'll be down. I feel like he will defile his body. He will. Yeah. <laughs> he will. He has in the past. He We've has. Many We've times. seen this in action. Yeah. So I guess I have to take Fran. I feel like Fran might be He's down. Not gonna want to mess up his hair. It's true, you know, but you don't have to mess everywhere. up your hair to eat a bunch of hot dogs. You, you might. You know, I think, I think if I if I gave him a proper lecture on how to eat the hot <laughs> dogs effectively, <laughs> I think Fran would be down to pack as many as possible. I think so. So I, I'm I'm glad I got Fran on my team. <laughs> Nailed it. Fran's going to walk away and just say, listen, Tefty. He's going to reach a <laughs> breaking point with Tefty's lectures. <laughs> Mid hot dog eating contest. All right. You have to pick your fantasy pick, too. Okay. 
So your third pick is Is there somebody... anyone who's like a famous hot dog eating contest winner? Because I'm going to pick that guy. Yeah, I mean, there is. <laughs> you can probably find one. <laughs> uh, hold on. It's, a, <laughs> it's an Asian guy. Kobe oh, Hashi. you know what? I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, right? All kinds of stuff, like super fast. Too. Yeah, he's like a super skinny Asian guy that like packs yeah. an amazing amount of hot dogs. He eats like a 10-pound burrito or something like that. Yeah. Like... Takeru Kobayashi. That's yeah, he my doesn't next compete pick, anymore. That guy. Okay. Then I'm going to pick the he's guy. He's got personal issues with Nathan's Are you picking hot Joey dogs. Chestnut? <laughs> I'm going to pick the guy from uh, Man vs. Food. <laughs> Ooh. That's Matt good. Stoney, dude. Yeah. You need Matt Stoney. Is that him? I don't know his it's, name. His name is also Kobayashi. That's the guy that we were talking about, Matt Stoney. Oh, okay. Nice. Kobayashi Dragon Maid. Maybe he's... Anyway. All right, those are the themes. Who wins? <laughs> you decide. Chat. Leave a comment in the YouTube video, and that's who decides who wins. All right. Who's the winner? YouTube comments. Yeah. If you not, if you're if you're watching the podcast, if you're listening to the podcast, you got to go to YouTube and tell us which yeah. team wins. And you also have to say, yeah. in addition, how many hot dogs do you think Butt Wipe can actually eat? Because he said three or four. <laughs> do you believe him? Or do you think he could do more? Do you think he's not going to eat the hot dogs? Three or four. All right. Is he suddenly also, is he suddenly going to go vegan? <laughs> you throw this whole thing. Vegan yeah. hot dogs. Vegan hot dogs. That's easy. Those aren't hot dogs. That's like, like they're not real hot, hot dogs. <laughs> <if they're> vegan. <laughs> Those aren't real hot dogs. Come on now. <laughs> I read an article that soy is actually. Never mind. This is not <laughs> tangent. This is side quest topics right yeah, here. Right? Turn side into <laughs> soy quest on Monday. Soy quest. It, we'll have it raises volume. your estrogen level. Soy does. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Not to an amount that makes any change based on the no. study. No. Just moderate amounts. Was that the last question? We, we, we could talk about. That. Yeah, that was it. Oh, we can talk about soy if you want. <laughs> soy beans, man. You know, soy cream is actually pretty good. I don't know if you had it before. Mm. I still rock regular. Yeah, it. yeah, Trader Joe's. You know, if you're a frequent of the Joe's, Joe's. yeah, TJ's, they got that there. It's actually pretty good. It's not bad. TJ Maxx. It's better than <laughs> coconut creamer. Coconut creamer just makes your coffee wet. Yeah. I like <laughs> almond milk to use in it, actually. Makes your coffee yeah. wet. Yeah. It makes your coffee wet? Does it just, make your water wet? It just too? makes it more wet. That's like what it tastes like. It's like, huh, this coffee okay. is wetter. That's what the coconut creamer <laughs> it makes does. Makes it more watery? Hmm. Yeah. Is that what you mean? <laughs> just it's a hard description imagine, to really kind of visualize, to be honest. Imagine with you. your coffee <laughs> suddenly getting more wet. That's what the co- mm. coconut creamer does. I can imagine it. I can. Yeah. See? Moist. Moist. Moist coffee? Moist. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's the show, guys. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, let us know. Is coffee wet? I don't know. That's something yeah, else you can argue about it's, it's, in the comment section. Will coconut it's, creamer... Whether it's wet or not, it's wetter with coconut cream. Yeah, yeah. will coconut is creamer... Also, let me know if this wet. DVD sign hit the corner at any point during this video <laughs> and timestamp it if you would. I feel like mind. chat was going to explode that. if it did happen. I didn't see it. <laughs> I think that's all it didn't happen? Yeah. Well, we'll have to try again next week then. Yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> Someday Absolutely. it'll happen. Mm-hmm. Someday. It'll happen eventually. Well, that is our show, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate all the support. Uh, shout out to our, our Patreon uh, supporters as well. Thank you guys for making the show happen. Thank you, guys. We do have another podcast as well. It is called SideQuest, which has been two months now. Almost. Almost two months deep yeah. in weekly yeah. shows. The eighth episode? Yeah. Yeah. Which is, uh, it's great. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. We were talking about other things that are not Destiny focused. And it's been. Talk about it's a po- It's a political show. Yeah, we get really deep into politics and angry and start shouting and yelling at each other. It's awesome. You should totally tune in. Cornhole. Really mad cornhole it. tactics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cornhole. <laughs> cornhole <laughs> tactics. <laughs> cornhole yeah. tactics. Oh, the Bean best bag. thing about cornhole, cornhole on TV tactics. was one of the sponsors was actually bags or books. <laughs> really? The it cornhole things been... are called bags. They throw bags. Briar, it would have been so much better (laughs) if it was a bag of dicks. Then it would have been great. Sponsored Uh, by a bag. Would it still be able to be on ESPN? Actual Mm -hmm. sponsor of the Revolver podcast. That was amazing. (laughs) I still have a bag of dicks around here somewhere. I bet you do. <laughs> Anyways, those were guys. good days, okay? Those were the days. <laughs> yeah, those were. Uh, episode, bag of dick sponsorship. <laughs> episode 143 in the bag. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to find more of me, you can talk to me at Teft on Twitter. That's twitter.com forward slash Teft, T-E-F-T. And catch my streams, twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. Uh, you can support me on there if you, uh, if you so choose. 
and uh, an occasional YouTube video shows up every now and then, but you have to go on a wild goose chase to find it. So, yeah. <laughs> Part of the fun. Yeah. It's the hunt. Uh, I'm Briar Rabbit. You can find me on Twitter at the Briar Rabbit. You'll see a lot of posts of me practicing for the ACL. I really think I got a chance at next year's championship. I'm proud of you. Um, I love also that this sport is named after injuries suffered in other sports. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> ACL. <laughs> It's on ESPN. Look it up. <laughs> you, are you can play in flip flops. <laughs> there you go. I am Miss 5000 Watts. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Just look for Miss 5000 Watts. Bandwipe? Me? I'm Bandwipe. And uh, you, I go by Buttwipe or Bandwipe. I'm Band underscore Wipe on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube and Instagram. Awesome. It has nothing to do with gaming. You guys absolutely give him a follow. Check out his content. He's fantastic. And uh, and also amazing that you've rebuilt all that stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, like the resurgence. So it's really cool. Yeah, it's great cool, to see. Thank you. Destiny yeah. community yeah. coming through strong. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Uh, so yeah, thank you very thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, if you are at Guardian Con this week, uh, have a fantastic time. Take some photos for us and uh, send a, yes, send us some pictures. Do. On the um, on Twitter, that'd be great to see because we unfortunately can't make it this year, but we we'll definitely miss everybody there. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Peace.